We're back with the Opie and Anthony show. We got Nick DiPaolo in studio. Very, very funny guy. You playing uh, Caroline's tonight? Oh, very cool. Eight o'clock. So that's something different, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Next thing you know, I'll be at the comedy cellar. <laughs> Phone number 877-212-ONA. We got... Um, Mr. Fuji, inventor of the blimp or no? <laughs> <laughs> you like that Larry King stuff? Oh, I was crying. Stupid in it. Larry. He's just the worst. Someone uh, someone wrote on the instant feedback. Uh, oh, where's that line? Uh, Thomas uh, Overbeck from Dallas. The Undertaker. Has he buried this bit yet? <laughs> Should it be buried? Comment. Phoenix, you're on the air. <laughs> yeah, he... Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. I guess they just lost track of when he became irrelevant. Like, cause here, Larry King years ago was the guy. Like, he was the guy. He had a talk show, and people went on there, and actually, he, he actually was able to ask them questions. And, that and, and people studied him because they thought he was a great interview. But he yeah. wasn't. He was stupid even when he had his marbles. Yeah, <laughs> he really was. It's like really dumb, basic questions. Oh yeah. And now though, he's just now it doesn't even make any sense. Well, I bet his rating's going to go through the roof now. Yeah, it's like watching crazy. a crazy guy. Yeah, yeah. you, you want to see that? Yeah. My uncle's 79, and my uncle goes, I remember last Thanksgiving, he goes, that Larry King's just afraid to die, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> my uncle's 79 years old. <laughs> it's like watching Peter Finch in Network. You're just hoping he'll shoot himself yeah. in the air. <laughs> yeah. It's completely ludicrous. Love Network. <laughs> Love it. Hey, uh, Dan in Jersey's got something for the show. Dan? Um, yeah. Well, because... Uh, Dan, Dan, start over. We messed uh, I don't know what happened. It's been a walkie-talkie. Yeah. <laughs> Try again. Uh, I was at the uh, Devils game last week, and uh, during the intermission, they had a musical chairs game, and they actually had E-Rock down on the ice. What? The game with music, musical chairs. E-Rock, were you playing wait, musical wait, wait. chairs How, in the Devils game? How do we, uh, how do we get this information what? from a caller? A musical chairs, Iraq. Yeah, it was a it was a CBS promotion with the Devils. So, uh, <laughs> what? You were the big get. Who oh, you? Uh, and oh, this. we got to go to the Devils game tonight. They got E Rock playing uh, musical chairs. E I can't miss this. E Rock, Kevin James, and Ray Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went out in the uh, first round, so. Of course he did. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> you you lost the first round of musical chairs, Fatso. It was only did you fall through the ice. <laughs> <laughs> he went from the toilet to the high chair to the Zamboni. He's like, there was more guys than there was chairs. It wasn't fair. <laughs> you lost in the first round? What happened? Yeah. Uh, the uh, There was an angry black gentleman who kind of elbowed me right into the ice, so went flying off the... Even at a hockey chair. game? I don't yeah. believe it. <laughs> uh, so you're saying you were assaulted. I was elbowed and then shoved to the ice to get out of the big inflatable chair that they had set up. What the hell was Eddie Griffin doing in New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> and you just fell on the ice? You just thumped on the ice like a piece of raw beet and then left? That's good. Yeah, pretty much. Eskimos hauled him away for his blubber. <laughs> How do they announce Quit pushing you? that lamp oil around. <laughs> How do they announce you to the crowd? Um, they announced me uh, E-Rock from the Opie and Anthony show on 92.3 K-Rock. And uh, what kind of applause did you get? About the same as the other people who were announced on there uh, and randomly picked. You got a little smattering. Guy on the Zamboni beeped his horn twice. <laughs> <laughs> you got the same reaction as some plumber from Jersey? Most of the people leave during the intermission. They go to the bars and get food and stuff, so half the seats were empty. Oh, that's why. Of course. Of course that's why. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have got a standing ovation. <laughs> right. Yeah. You lost in the first round. You were <laughs> physical chairs. What do you mean inflatable chairs? Too? How many were there? They had the. Uh, there was four big inflatable flame chairs. Yeah. Um, in the center of the ice. And five people. And five people. Yeah, that's how that game works. You got shoved to the ice. Yeah. It's just like life, isn't it? You were also told that you couldn't uh, win the prize. Yeah. Why? <laughs> CBS was providing the prize, so I was told uh, you're not allowed to win, so you have to get out in the first round. Oh, my God. Then you, why did they have... Why did they have you? Who was running this, Elliot Spitzer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, damn. So are you trying to say that you let the guy beat you? Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to lose. I wasn't supposed to uh, let the guy shove me onto the ice uh, right out of the seat. You should have pulled a Bruce Willis in Pulp Fiction. Just one. You know who the guy was? Jeremiah Wright. 
Stephen S. from Basha writes, E-Rock. <laughs> <had> <laughs> swing and a miss. That's good. I like it. Yeah. E-Rock uh, had them empty the Zamboni so he can make a giant snow go. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lot of exaggerated humor today. Bear with us. <laughs> yeah, what uh, music was playing during the musical chair? Oh, segment? I don't know. You don't. You know? gotta know. No, I, I seriously I don't. You weren't I, listening. You really don't know, huh? No. All right. Very nice. I bet. I, I bet he does know. Of course he does. Because <laughs> we'd play it, and then he'd be all embarrassed. We'd make him play. Good. <laughs> One chair. <laughs> you and Pat Duffy. <laughs> Pat Duffy just goes on, man. Yeah, he would just kill him. Kill him. Hip check. All right. Uh, Nick DiPaolo in studio. Caroline's tonight. What's happening in your world? Anything? Are you following this, uh, the, the Clinton thing? Hillary no. lying? She's a lying sack. What happened? No. <laughs> Hillary? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, under it, fire like in Bosnia could, 12 years ago. Somebody could miss that ass with a rifle. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> sniper. And those ankles. <laughs> Ricochet. <laughs> Killing three civilians. <laughs> She's just a lying whore, and yeah, you know, just the Democrats. I can't. Anyway. We went over it earlier, but we didn't talk about the Chelsea Clinton thing. She needs a slap in her ugly face, though. <laughs> she Mom. went from okay to ugly. What happened? Okay, she, when was she okay? I would. She went from troll to troll two. Weird. <laughs> she's oh, she's starting to take on the look of Hillary a bit. Yeah, yeah. she is looking like mom. Yeah, but uh, she was asked about Monica Lewinsky, and she wasn't happy about that. Mm -hmm. The first time. Did you hear this? Yeah, no. by a young fella, right? Yeah. At a college. Listen. Wow. You're the first person, actually, that's ever asked me that question. Um, in the, I don't know, maybe 70 college campuses that I've now been to. And I do not think that's any of your business. Oh. Chelsea Clinton said she didn't want that to be the last question, so she took one more. What was the question? About tell you what global warming. Uh, the kid asked, you know, because your mother, like, stuck by, you know, Bill during the whole Monica Lewinsky thing. Mm -hmm. Some people think that that means she has bad judgment, so is that going to hurt her? And it's a legitimate question. It's absolutely. Of course it is. Of course it is. I'm tired of this coddling of Chelsea oh, Clinton. Oh, Jesus, she's a mutt. If, you, if she's going to be in the uh, public eye and you're going to go out and, and do 70 college campuses, the fact that your mother stood there like a suburban idiot while your father embarrassed her in front of the country yeah. is a legit question. Yeah, all of a sudden that's off the, you know, you, you can't yeah. go near that. And then, then go, don't go out and, and uh, mm. you know, don't well, put yourself out there. And she said it in such a snooty, yeah, what a you know, snot. You can like, tell how she, dare you. Yeah. That's the first time I've been asked that. You exactly. think it's not the first time people have thought it, though. Well, exactly. They it's wanted to, but they're coddling her. And it should be asked every time time now yeah absolutely every time well, it should be she's just you could tell she's brought up by a feminist scum that really was ir ir an irritating response if she would have just said look i'd rather not talk about it but it's the arrogance of business yeah 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 it is stupid yeah. he lied under oath and he got caught and mm. uh you know he was embarrassed in front of the whole country i had that fight with my wife he saw it last night the story of course she's like that's none of their business you know <laughs> so i slept on the couch downstairs it certainly, oh. it certainly is. It does show Hillary's judgment. Yeah. Because the bottom line is, if Elliot Spitzer getting a hooker in his private life, it shows his poor judgment. Then the way she handled a sexual crisis in her house should show her poor judgment. It's absolutely. You uh, can't relevant. do that today, Jim. You can't show a woman in a negative light. But you know they crap ice cream and sherbet. You can't do it. <laughs> and I'm not even going to disagree with that. You can't. You can't portray him in a negative light, whether it's a goddamn sitcom or real life. It is ridiculous. Oh, She's so snooty about it. I loved your reference, but it turned on little Jimmy over there. Yeah, I mean, what? What yeah, because he actually does think it's sherbet <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. perhaps a gelato with certain, ah, certain ethnicity. I know that was the wrong guy to say that. Yeah, yeah really. I mean, Jimmy's Jimmy, it was quite brilliant, but his just... pillowcase is like fifty-one flavors. <laughs> 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 and you got Spitzer uh, linked to another call girl ring. That's the front page of our paper today. Yeah. Why is that shocking? It's like you found out he bought his shoes at Tom McCann and Faber. Who cares? <laughs> Just yeah, like it, like it was the first time and last time he ever did anything like that. It's another whore shop. It's, the, you know, yeah. But when did this the guy, guy... was how old? Of course he's he's done this before. When when did the guy have time to govern? Because now there's uh, this busty didn't. blonde who's... I know. Look kinda look, she kind of looks like Courtney Love. It's like a tranny version of Courtney Love. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, she's claiming that not only did uh, he use her services as far as the uh, the escort uh, company goes or whatever, she uh, did it herself a few times to mm. Mr. Spitzer. Was he wearing those black, black socks, socks pulled up to his knees? <laughs> oh, what a creep. He was all He couldn't even get his pants off. He was so turned no. on by these young chicks. He just had to leave a sock. He just jumped in with his pants around his ankle. That's it. Yeah. 
Probably, probably called the Emperor's Club because your penguin walked in the back. <laughs> <laughs> <of those ribs. laughs> Let's say hi to David and PA. David. Hey. Hey. Of, of course, music during E Rock's promotion was Baby Elephant Walk. <laughs> oh. oh. Poor E Rock. Yeah. And you know what? The Hillary Clinton thing is really annoying me. It wouldn't be anybody's business if it was the, if they, she had just stayed out of the uh, pr public life. But the, she wants to be elected as president. Everything is on the table. Is fair game. Everything, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I just that whole family makes me sick. But you would get a picture with Bill. In a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'd sell out the Republicans in a second. <laughs> I actually like Obama, but I like, I mean, you know, I, he's in Hillary. Do you? How do you feel that uh, now two people you know have gotten their picture taken with uh, Bill Clinton? Does that uh, bother you? No, more than two. I mean, one, one guy I know sat in the Oval Office with Bill Clinton and, and worked out jokes with him. Who? Daryl Hammond. Wow. Daryl has Clinton's story. He All knows Clinton. Right. And he's okay. performed for Bush. He's performed for Congress, the Senate. I got a picture of the president. Oh, Jimmy Carter. Uh, really? Wow. Well, I keep, really I keep it behind my picture of me and Richie April from the Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, on my mantle at home, it's behind me and Richie April on the Sopranos. I did a Tonight Show. Jimmy Carter was on there. Oh, I was wondering. I thought maybe it was a rally you were being dragged out of. <laughs> He's like, <"Hey>, <laughs> <laughs> Did you send me one of your CDs? I'm like, yeah, you'll really enjoy the I had C a, word uh, three times. I had a uh, Christmas card uh -huh. from Richard Milhouse Nixon. You're kidding. Yeah, when we were uh, in school, little tater, uh, little, little kids, they made us write uh, Christmas <laughs> cards to the uh, the president. And we did that, and uh, uh, he sent them back. He sent one back. No, he didn't. Uh, yes, he did. No, he did. Somebody else Just to you or to the whole class? I know it wasn't really that him. Was, that was your dad, so you wouldn't but cry was, again. No, he did. No, it was like, it back, was a Daddy. stamped signature. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. So it was like his signature, but it's just, it was a stamp. Yeah. Dear douche, Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's very ironic. Because I, uh, I got a birthday card from Spiro Agnew when I was three. <laughs> really? <laughs> Spiro Agnew. That's right. His vice president. Yes. I, I got a uh, good luck with that headache card from Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, before we move on from uh, politics, and we got uh, Mayweather Jr. coming in, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yeah, coming in in a few minutes with his entourage. Um, we played this earlier, Nick. I, I, I want to get your comment on this. There's sure. a guy... He's going to be a YouTube sensation by the end of the day, I'm thinking. I got turned on to this video yesterday. Larry Sinclair, he's telling this outrageous Barack Obama story. But he wants to, he wants to make an official video. So he's very serious. <laughs> and he made this video with cars going by outside. And he posted it on YouTube. Larry Sinclair? Yeah, listen where, where to Where does he live? Uh, he's from Illinois, it looks like. He's, uh, a, yeah. he's a limo driver. He's got some uh, outrageous Must be true. accusations <laughs> about him and Barack Obama. Okay. Listen to this. Hi, my name is Larry Sinclair. I'm making this video and posting it on YouTube <laughs> because of an incident involving myself and Senator Barack Obama. It's just all headed fag. <laughs> it's all official. I love the how official he is. Sounds very gay, doesn't he? Uh, he sounds a little effeminate. Not that there's anything he? right yes. with that. <laughs> <laughs> He's been hit with the sword of the gay. Yep, right across the <laughs> cheek. <laughs> Barack Obama. Between November 3rd and November 8th of 1999 in the Chicago, Illinois area. The mainstream media and Obama himself has done greatly to prevent this story from becoming public. During those time periods... What do they do? Ignore daring, you. Daring, not during. Daring. 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 He's nervous by himself in yeah. his own room making yeah. a film. <laughs> Imagine if this is just all true. But no <laughs> yeah. one's going to believe No one believes him because he just sounds like a nut. He's sitting there like, I got gold. Yeah. I'm finally going to release it. Here I it know. is on YouTube. Here's my big confession. And right. it's going to bust things wide open. Huge scandal with Obama. And people watch and go, ah, he's a kook. Yeah greatly to prevent this story from becoming public. During those time periods in 1999, I met Obama at an upscale lounge in Chicago, Illinois. After having a few drinks, Obama and I left in my limo, began to drink. Mr. Obama acquired powder cocaine for my use, crack cocaine for his use. Mm -hmm. I performed sex on Crack Senator goes better Obama. with chicken. Oh, no. Oh, he must have no. had the beef. This guy. <laughs> 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 he 
<laughs> saying he serviced Obama in the limo. Yeah. Yeah. If After still- uh, having some coke. Well, I'm working in Chicago in April. I wonder if he still has a limo service. <laughs> <laughs> be nice on the way to the airport. Kenny, get up front. Keep your mouth shut. Okay. He then ejaculated on my pants when I was shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll do that for you, Jimmy. <laughs> this guy, go ahead. Anything else? Continue? Oh, yeah, it's Oh, great. there's more? Oh, I love this Really? Guy. This guy's a, a hoot. cocaine for my use, crack cocaine for his use. I performed <laughs> sex on Senator Obama, who at the time was a state representative for the state of Illinois. Well, thanks for his resume. Mr. Obama knows these allegations to be true. I'm challenging Mr. Obama to come forth, be honest, stop claiming that his drug use is limited to his teenage years. 1999, you weren't a teenager. 1999, you were a state representative for the people of the state of Illinois. 1999, I performed sex on you in the back of my limo, as well as in my hotel room in Gurney, Illinois, two days later. Gurney. Gurney. If you challenge this, the authenticity of this allegation, I challenge you to take a polygraph test, as yeah. I will submit to as well. Yeah, go on that Fox show. These <laughs> allegations are true and need to be told to the public. Let the public dis- decide whether Mr. Obama is being forthright and honest. <laughs> I believe this guy. Yeah. I absolutely believe him, but I think mm-hmm. he's nuts, and I obviously don't think it was Barack Obama, but I, I really think that he believes... Who was it? Flip Wilson? Well, in 99, it could have been somebody. Oh, that's right. Flip Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> it was Fred Armisen from SNL. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I think that he thinks it was him. I really do. Be, be, I'll tell you why. Why, why, why. Wait a minute. Hold on. Why do you rule out that it's not true? Oh, possible it is, but I mean, right. I'm not saying mm-hmm. I, it is possible, but I, I, either way, I think this guy believes it because he's saying things like, uh, like he's almost like, look, we both know this is true. And he's saying like two days later, it's just some weird little specific in that. <laughs> Like, so you think this guy got bamboozled? This is very Thought he easy. was servicing Obama? Very easy solution. Mm-hmm. Describe Obama's private parts. Uh, like they did Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Right. Yeah, yes. They might not have a distinguishing mark. Oh, I'm sure he does. Mm. Yeah. They, they all mm-hmm. brand themselves down there. <laughs> <laughs> distinguishing mark. He stubbed it on the sidewalk. He's got a yeah. Dallas Cowboys logo, yeah. I heard. On his left nut. <laughs> I don't know why Dallas. That was so stupid. Uh, well, no, it would have been the Bulls or... Uh, yeah, it would have been a know, Chicago the, team. The Bears. <laughs> this guy, you know what's funny? You can tell this guy's a crack because you can see John McCain walking by his window while he's making the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> McCain put this out there. Dude. Yeah, this looks. This seems like a... Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's got yeah. ulterior motives. No, I, I think he's just nuts. Do you, you think, think he's just let me crazy? Ask, he's just nuts. I think is this going to make like the mainstream news? Will this be on like 5 o'clock tonight? A I'm... sex scandal? Yeah, do you think? Sex and drug scandal involving Obama? We'll tell you about it. No. Huh? No. You don't think it'll make like uh, oh, no. Larry King? It'll make... <laughs> it'll be what huge. do you think? It'll be huge on YouTube today, but that's about this it. This guy will be they... more famous. Yeah. After 21 years of playing the clubs, this guy's already more famous than me because of this. <laughs> this guy's nuts. We're trying to get him on the... Uh, the show. Get him, get him I think we here. got to his lawyer so far, and we might be able to get him. Get on him today. in here and get him a limo. Let me get the back. And get him a lie detector test. We'll do the lie detector test. How great would that be? Fantastic. We're all uh, sitting here with rods. I think we could uh, throw another quickie in here before we take a break. When Richard Long couldn't put two holes in his wall to install his satellite TV system, he turned to his handgun. Yeah, Richard Long. Long shot the holes in the wall, but the shots went all the way through to the outside. Where his wife was standing in the yard. <laughs> Patsy Long died from a gunshot. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Good. Oh, he's a genius. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, wait, wait a minute. He's a genius. Ever. He's going to get off. Well, it was an accident. Ever. All yeah, right, um, honey, you stand here. <laughs> I'm going to go inside. Just No, right here. Where's the hammer? Oh, forget Don't it. Get my move. <laughs> All right. There we go. Uh. All right, now I'll finish my job. <laughs> what was he doing? He was hanging something? or was... I went back a little bit. Let's listen to this again. Yeah, going... where was it where, where they're using firearms as tools? Then he asked his kids to stand it. Does this look straight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this good? <laughs> Looks like Daddy's freezer. Uh, bird. What was he uh, doing, Ope? We're going to start this one over. Jeez, I'm out, of, good. I'm out of bullets, and I got one kid left. <laughs> yeah. I was good, digging a pool. Good time to hang that wall mirror. <laughs> Somebody call Aunt Lily. When Richard Long couldn't put Richard two holes Long. in his wall mm-hmm. to install his satellite TV system, he turned to his handgun. 
Long shot the holes in the wall, but the shots went all the way through to the outside, where his wife was standing in the yard. Patsy Long died from a gunshot wound to the chest. It was the second <laughs> shot her husband fired. Tragic accident. You know, bad things happen to good people. Officials what? in Sedalia, Missouri are investigating and say they haven't decided if Long will face charges in the death. He didn't realize that she was outside, uh, had no clue that she was, was out there. So, like He says the point. this type of case would usually result in manslaughter charges, but that decision is up to the prosecutor's office. Nabe has also died laughing. To the <laughs> <laughs> the 22, huh? Jesus. Wow. Oh. So he was probably trying to hang something mm-hmm. on the outside of the wall. Or maybe run uh, wires through or something. What? Whatever. whatever. Uh, there's oh. drills for that. Yeah. It could use like a, a, a drill bit. Oh, that takes too much time. <laughs> ah, screw it. Get the gun out. You well, can't kill the wife with a drill. <laughs> let's just like leave the weapon too, standing up against the uh, up against the outside of the wall. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> what was she doing in the yard anyway? Yeah, yeah. Was that detail? Was she just standing there, really? Standing right in front of where he's going to be shooting through the wall. She's like just eyeing it for him. Yeah, that looks oh. about right. <laughs> yeah, eyeball that for me, could you? <laughs> <laughs> He's just got a silhouette of her painted on the wall. <laughs> Head pops off like Kennedy. Perfect. <laughs> First thing he sees on the satellite system is the news with him killing his wife. How ironic. <laughs> in HD. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, in wonderful HD. Wonderful HD. <laughs> oh, jeez. I wonder what idiot did this. Oh, wait. It's police in my yard. Chester's lever from Whack Bag writes, it, it's uh, regular Joe, the captain of the police. Uh, saying bad things happen to good yeah, people. Right. That's how the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Who said she was good people? I know. She, she might have been, been a real chooch. This guy <laughs> had every right. You know, she could have been a real a-hole. <laughs> we might be uh, laughing at the wrong person here. I'm just saying. I'm true. not saying it's true, but you, you never know. She could have been a real jerk, too. I don't know. Good people. Huh? Not that she deserved that. But hey, He was a good person. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> They're all stupid, though, I'll was say that. Was he using the gun as an actual tool, or was he pissed like I, when I can't do something, I get pissed? <laughs> you just, just shoot throw it. a bowling ball, a ball at the, you know. Yeah. I have been known to shoot things when I get have mad you? at them. Wow. I've shot my computer. Oh, was he actually using it as a drill? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I think he was trying hole. to use it as a drill. But at least, you know, I back up my targets. <laughs> <laughs> and I shoot in the basement. <laughs> I'm a witness. <laughs> I'm here to say it's as true as he told us. That goddamn computer was wow. Did you? really you pissing me off, so I took it downstairs and pulled an put office. a nice uh, 223 through it. <laughs> really? You're really? Yeah. Yes, he did. See, I love him. That's a that true Italian. fantastic. Is- yeah, just pull out the weapons. All evidence has been removed, oh, but yeah, I was lucky enough bit. to see it. Uh, Randy, Illinois, what's up? Hey, boys, what's going on? I hey. love your stuff, man. Thanks. I um, want to let you guys know that uh, satellite systems are usually set up on the outside of... What in the hell was this guy doing on yeah. the outside of the house set up a ditch? Punching out. Love you guys. Well, well, you obviously want to run some wires from the outside to the inside. Yeah, you maybe you want to do that. Needed some holes in there. So, I prefer to use... Uh, <laughs> I prefer to use a larger caliber weapon when running wires through my wall, though. I'd use, you know, 45 or something like that. 22. Mm. Jesus. Cannonball. All right, we got to take a break. (laughs) A cannonball. (laughs) He shot a cannon into his wife's head. (laughs) We got to take a break. We got Floyd Mayweather Jr. uh, joining the show next. Is he he here? I believe so. Opie and Anthony, stay there. Call the Opie and Anthony show. Wow, wow, wow. Cell phone and PDA users send your message to feedback at opianthony.com. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Waiting for Floyd Mayweather Jr. to stop on by and say hi. We also have Nick DiPaolo in studio. Hi. A very bitter and very funny man. Why am I bitter? <laughs> I don't know. He's a realist. I've been like this since I was six. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, yes. Been, been called bitter in first grade. Yeah. Really? I <laughs> don't even know the word It's on yet. his report card. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. bitter. <laughs> right. Check your parents got to read. He's bitter. Yeah, bitter. Where did it all go wrong for you, Nick? I don't, I, I don't know that it has opened. What sense? Uh, Brown what? versus Board of Education. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norton Whoa. said that. Wait till, wow. Wait till Mayweather shows up. Jimmy Norton said that. Yeah. yeah. And his entourage. <laughs> Get your ass handed to you, Nick. That was pretty accurate, though, Jim. Pretty funny. <laughs> Nick is uh, 
Extremely funny. He's playing Caroline's tonight here in New York City. Go to nickdip.com, by the way. That's one word. Nickdip.com. Yeah, you can pick up Nick DiPaolo hip boots and hats. And the number for Caroline's, <laughs> 212-757-4100. That's not the number I was going to give out. What? Nope. Oh, no. What, what is it? 212-757-4100. I like saying 4100. Me too. It sounds cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I call it uh, 41 double goose eggs. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. You're a rebel. Yeah. I'm taking a crack. <laughs> Eight o'clock. <laughs> yes, you do. You guys heard about the cheerleader, right? The cheerleader? Oh, that. yeah, that's kind of a sad case. It's dummy. Is that the one that... One was bigger than the other. Gave Obama a zing zangler. <laughs> male cheerleader from Illinois. <laughs> yeah. Give me a homo. I was from, in, from Gurney. He got in my limo with me. And I performed. Th- in, Gurney. in Gurney. In Gurney. In a hotel room in Gurney. That must have been some hotel. During the 80s. What a, what a ghoul. Students at a high school in Boca Raton are grieving the loss of a popular cheerleader. She died during a breast augmentation surgery. Uh, Now these surgical procedures are done every day and increasingly on teenagers. No one could have imagined the outcome of this plastic surgery procedure. Stephanie Kaliva is described as a bright student college bound, someone who was working her way through high school. You can tell what she meant to everyone from the flowers that have been left here on the fence at West Boca Raton High School where she was going to graduate later this year. She was the best and the brightest. 18-year-old Stephanie Kaliba died over the weekend from complications during a cosmetic surgery procedure. Her friends are devastated. It's just sad to see, let her, like, see her go because she's like a wonderful person, smart. She had a lot of like talent. She doesn't sound very sad. devastated. Kaliba no. had the surgery at this yeah. Boca Raton Surgical Center mm. and had a devastating reaction to the anesthesia because of an underlying medical condition. You can Small see the pom-poms in the shirt left by her cheerleading classmate. She was captain of the high school cheerleading team mm. here. Yeah. Tragic That's story. Tragic, really. Yeah. Well, a lot of the moms out there are getting the, the breast implants for their daughters before they even leave high school. Yeah. They were trying to blame it. I was watching uh, Fox last night. Laura... Ingram, uh, Ingraham, whatever. She was trying Ingram. to blame it on guys. Oh, really? Yeah. That the, have... these. That uh, let me let me let me get it because yeah. I know exactly what it is. Of course. That the image that is put out there. Yeah. These young women yeah, are fault. seeing this because the men put this image out there and want to attain these women, and uh, then yeah. they do this to themselves. Yeah, that was the. Uh, and I and like Laura Ingram fault. usually, but really, know, she was way off on this oh, one. And it's please. phony because I like I like I prefer real, and it's just it's idiotic to to blame uh, stop blaming men. Stop it. Yeah. You know, what do you think we think of Matthew McConaughey? Time to, exactly, man. It's just, uh, you telling me that I got to be rich or I got to be powerful in order to bang you. If you. Sorry, ladies. We don't judge your social status as heavily as you judge ours, and you don't judge our looks as heavily as we judge yours. That's the reality of it. Well, it's a social is, thing with us. You want our attention. That's why you did it. Yes. Some type of self-esteem issue. I didn't create that. I just met you last night in a club. It's not my fault. <laughs> exactly. I didn't create the self-esteem issue. I just use it to my advantage. <laughs> yeah. Something on exactly. Your, back. your uncle created it with a Miller Light bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that can get through, can it? Uh, why, not? Sure, why not? Of course. I want to keep a bit alive. Uh, Thomas Overbeck from Dallas helping us out. I guess God needed a cheerleader. Ah, God yeah. was—he's uh, been busy because he he wanted a, a McMuffin. I guess God needed a needed McMuffin, an, an egg McMuffin, because the egg McMuffin dude died, and now yeah. he gets a cheerleader today as well. Yeah, it's not a bad day for God. And he got Richard Widmark, who I thought was dead. I <laughs> Did swear, he die with I, yeah, I swear, 93. I would have bet he was dead, and he just died. Why do we not have clips of Richard Woodmark? Richard Woodmark. Ha- you gotta have some. I'll be gone tomorrow, but you gotta have clips of Wood. You know what I do to squealers? Come oh, on, you lying old hag. I love he pushes the old broad down the stairs in the wheelchair. I peed on his star on the Walk of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little tribute. Yeah, I had to pee. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very famous scene in a movie called Kiss of Death with Victor Mature. Mm-hmm. And uh, women were women back then. Oh, Nick. <laughs> you know, these idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and he shows up, uh. and, and Woodmark is looking for this snitch. So he goes to the guy's old mother who's in a wheelchair, and she's, she's like, oh, Pieta's not here. And he goes, you lying old hag. And he takes a cord out of the wall, and he wraps her up in the wheelchair, and he just <laughs>, laughs as he rolls her down a flight of stairs. <laughs> yeah, that's a great you, scene. You lying old hag. Would they hag. ever do that today? Ever. Oh, my oh, God. No. no. Fantastic. Huh? 
They would do it to a guy, right? Mm. Oh, absolutely. A guy dressed up like an old lady. And he's <laughs> laughing, though. Mm-hmm. He's so happy. That's to be what doing he was that. known for. It says mm-hmm. in the article. Yeah. yeah, that sick laugh that he had. What a great <laughs> sociopath he was. Yeah. A great line. The prosecutor comes to ask, Are you going to talk now, Tommy? Yeah, <laughs> back then, they were all like that. And he's like, I wouldn't give you the skin off a grape. It's the greatest. <laughs> Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, the writing has improved at least. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, grape. Uh, oh, I would love to say that to someone and mean it. Like that was tough talk back then. Yeah. yeah. You say it to a heckler, Jim. When you're yeah. a I love the women. I love the women though. Like you were saying that. <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on, guys. But she was just this <laughs> doting idiot. Like, yeah. Older victim, mature, had the two daughters. I gotta see my daughter. Oh, Nick! <laughs> <laughs> no matter what he did, she loved him. <laughs> what, what was the movie Jimmy with Cagney shoved the grapefruit in the woman's face? Yeah, Remember? that was a good one. I don't know, but yeah. I love it. Was it white heat? Just mushed a, a, a half a grapefruit. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. Picked it up and mushed it right in her face. Yeah. He goes, I wish you was a wishing well or something. <laughs> and I dump you down the hand. Sticks a grapefruit <laughs> in her face like that. Just <laughs> 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 Pushes it in her face and turns yeah, it like three. It was, was like it, a hateful look on his face. Was it breakfast at Tiffany's? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's not the angel with dirty faces, is it? I, d- I don't know. It's a, it's oh a famous God. scene, though. I Definitely wish you were a wishing scene. well or something like that. Then I dump Here, it on the... Here's the scene. Uh, public it's from enemy, public yes. enemy. Public enemy. Public yes. enemy, okay. Look at his hair doing it. He rules. And that's... Yeah, uh, yeah who is that? Can you do the audio from that? No, you can't play from uh, the We're not allowed to. Eh. Eh, see? Oh, that wow. That was the old days. Oh. I thought you were Mayweather. It's just that. <laughs> just yeah. a tall white guy. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's fair weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair weather. Uh, all right. Right. Yeah. You want to start at the beginning of the movie. The credits are rolling. Yeah, really. Uh, there, there he goes. He goes. <laughs> That's not like a punch in the face. Look at- you know what? He's not, a, he's not acting right no. now. He's really enjoying filming that scene. He, he just annoyed her that. on set. Yeah, they, well, sh- they show that on The Sopranos. Tony's watching that and laughing. <laughs> he's not laughing. Yeah, he's sitting in his seat laughing. <laughs> Look up Kiss of Death Kiss of with death. Mark and see if he's in there. There's also a gr- the greatest slap ever captured is he slaps this fat man named Luigi in the face. Because uh, the guy, Nick, is in there, and he's, he's like, get the deluxe short dinner for my pal. And he's not friends with him. He wants to kill him. And he goes, but this to you, though, the kitchen is closed. And he stands up, and he, it's the sleekest face slap. Me and my friend watched it. We must have <laughs> rewound it nine <laughs> times. It, you've never seen a better slap. Uh, it's great. It's a crispy slap to the face. <laughs> and you That's it. when they made movies. Look at the old is. school wheelchair. My God. Oh, yeah. We'll get these links up on onaradio.com later. <laughs> he pulls the cord. He's got a suit on, a, a great hat. <laughs> <laughs> that hat should be on a giraffe. Certainly- bleh, bleh. An hour and a half. But why does he? Uh, what is he going to do with the cord? Really? He's tying her in the wheel- chair. Yeah. Why does he doesn't have to want tie her? Be able to She's use already her- in a wheelchair. Because she could use her arms maybe to like help herself yeah. down uh, down the stairs. He doesn't want her. He put her in the wheelchair by trying to hang joy. a shelf with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, you've never seen it. Look, he's holding, opening the door. He opens the door angrily, and oh, this bitch is going down the steps. <laughs> you've never seen a happier mug. <laughs> See, look at him. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And she's screaming. Oh my god! How did I miss right this down movie? Down the stairs. Never seen this scene. No. Next. Oh, that's fantastic! Right down the step, and he, and he and he and he just goes, "You lying old hag!" He she caught her an endo. <laughs> I hope she was all right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> boy, boy, did she take a tumble! You Are can't we... paralyze somebody's already paralyzed. No. Can we get the audio from this scene? She's dead. But you can't even somebody make that... in the back office. Let's go. You can't even make that look like an accident because he tied her up with cord. <laughs> they should do that to Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a wig on him. <laughs> Michael Madsen was talking about that scene when he was in? What? Oh, yeah, I think Chris so. Chris Goh was telling us? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Madsen was one of the greatest interviews we've ever done. I love that guy. He's, he's a, great. He's he's uh, a really great funny. Heavy. He was amazing. I Do we have any Madsen Michael Madsen story. stories? I got one. You got one? Yeah. yeah. E-Rock, you got any of those clips, too? He's like an intimidating. He plays a good badass. Yeah. And, and I used to go to the gym in L.A., and uh, I went down to the parking lot, the under, underground parking lot, to get my car, and I see him trying to pull out in his SUV, and his wife or his girlfriend's outside telling him how much clearance he has. Oh, no. <laughs> so I go to him like this. I go like this, you know, with a hand gesture saying he's got like a couple inches. He just gives me this dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> like he wanted to punch my face. <laughs> I go, you get this much. Just that Help hateful me. look yeah. that he had in Donnie Brasco. He, <laughs> eyebrow furled. I went, ugh. Just got yeah. my car. He came in to do the show and I'm like, hey, I'm Opie. And he just looks at him and he just starts laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, man. I know it's a dumb name, but you know, help me out here a little bit. 
Plays a great heavy. Though. Oh, he's fantastic. Love yeah. him, man. He's got a website. Hates Hollywood. How does that website go again? He lists all his projects. And he lists every movie oh, he's yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he rates his own movies and, th- and then tells you why he did the movie. My wife told me. Like, must some of- see. And then there's kind of, you know, see him if the, you, you want to. And then there's <laughs> ones that you should just not see because they suck. Needed the money. And he, yeah. Type of he puts oh, damn. Hey. Oh. Hey. We've been hey. See, talk that smack now. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Nick? <laughs> oh wow, we gotta behave. Are you kidding me? How are you, sir? Good morning. What's Floyd up, Mayweather Jr. Trouble? has joined the show. It's Money Mayweather, baby. Floyd Money Mayweather. Well, where's yeah. the money? We saw you throwing it out at the Hard Rock Cafe yesterday. We thought you'd have a few for us today. <laughs> and, and it's not Junior. For those that don't know, no, it isn't that. Junior. Never been Junior. I never said it. Uh, Jimmy was saying junior I never all morning. Said junior. I don't matter. What's up, baby? <laughs> Talk to I me. Say junior. So, uh, all right, you're in WrestleMania. Uh, this guy has got you by uh, 16 inches and 282 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> big boy, big boy. Yeah, you're uh, fighting the big show WrestleMania uh, yeah. on Sunday. He's yeah, seven foot tall, and you're. I'm not even going to say how tall you are because that might eight. that might make him. Uh, I guess. I don't let know. me see. I'll tell you right now. Is it uh, five eight one fifty eight? Yeah, five eight one fifty eight. That's me. And uh, Ab- absolutely. How, how did they approach you about doing this? No, what happened was, um, honestly, I was just I always been a fan of wrestling, you know, from the '80s. But now my uh, my two my two boys are fans of wrestling. My two sons, uh, nine and seven. So um, um, I got invited to uh, No Way Out, and then um, somehow when I was at the wrestling match, the guy called me. I'm like, well, I'm just here to watch wrestling. <laughs> so I jumped over and got in the ring and um, punched him in the face, gave him broke his nose, gave him two black eyes. I went to the back. They said, um, what do you think about getting into wrestling? I said, it is what it is. And the guy said, he challenged me in, in wrestling. He asked me, that. so the next time I went out, they asked me to, he asked me, do I want to face him in WrestleMania? The big show, I said, absolutely. So that's how I got involved with wrestling. Are you actually going to wrestle? Or are you going to make him put gloves on? Like, you let this, this monster grab you? Or are you gonna- uh, this, is a, this is a no holds bars match. This is a little different from um, every other match that's, that's ever been held you know, in WrestleMania. Everything goes. Why would you do that? Really? I mean, you're undefeated. Well, you're 39 and 0. I mean, uh, uh-huh. you, you're fighting De La Hoya against in September. Why would you get into the ring with something this large? Why don't you just bite him? Uh, why not? <laughs> Is we got we must see Sunday. Is the risk uh, worth the reward? I mean, win, lose, or draw. I mean, we don't we don't mind we don't mind taking risk. You know, I I mean, all the risk I've took thus far. Look at the reward. So I feel it was worth it. You so like, you you gonna you gonna actually punch him? Will you be using your uh, your skills? I'd imagine he's gonna like go uh, after I'm, his package I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, use I, it like a speed bag. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, it's gonna be hard to get inside on a, a big guy like that without him just grabbing you like a grizzly bear. Well, you know, I've been practicing with my big man over there. Yeah, oh no yeah, kidding, man, how tall are you? Wow, yeah, he's like seven one. Holy seven one. Jeez. Is he real? Yeah, yeah seven one. Seven, Is he seven. really? No, he's wow. actually seven foot. No, he taller than seven foot. Easy. He's yeah. Seven, he's, seven, oh one, hell seven, yeah. Two. That's that's one of my securities. So, you know, we we've been practicing. We've been working. I've been working with some wrestling coaches. Of course, my boxing coach, uh, sh- uh, strength and conditioning coach, Leonard. Then the LB also my advisor sitting next to me. So every everything has been going great and, and tremendous. Prepare for the you know, prepare for uh, uh WrestleMania twenty four. How's Vince? Isn't he like a lunatic? No, great guy. You like Vince? Great everything first class service, just like we like it. Get in there and mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vince. He's the best genius. They declared you, uh, Ring Magazine called you the greatest uh, fighter pound for pound in the world. How many times have you uh, 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 switched weight classes and how many, th- I mean, you keep switching and you just keep winning the title and then you get uh-huh. bored and you switch again. How many switches <laughs> have you made and how many have you won? Um, since, I think I've been world champion like a decade now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I beat the best at 130, moved at 135, beat the best, moved at 140, beat the best, moved at 147, beat Beat two of the best, then went to 54, beat Oscar, went back down to 54. Uh, I mean, went back down to 47, and uh, Mary Ricky hadn't had a, um, you know one hell of a fight, and now I'm in WrestleMania. Well, De La Hoya, you're fighting again in September. Uh, I mean, obviously he's had his uh, problems. Is that fight still on? I mean, is that you know? I mean, you well, I mean, trash talk before the fight. That'd be a great one to use. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, certainly well, would. You know, um, the thing with De La Hoya, the first time we fought. Uh, the fans wanted to see a knockout. It's the thing that they, they it's something always in the game. Which De La Hoy gave me heavyweight gloves the first time we fought. You know, everything was it was, you know, geared towards his way. He wanted he chose the gloves. 
he chose the site and he chose the weight class. But you know, a lot of fans don't know that they would have got a lot, a lot more action if I had the right gloves I was supposed to have. You know, he had he said, well, Mayweather needs to wear these gloves, but the gloves he gave me was heavyweight gloves. So I mean, yeah, mm. let's both put on the right gloves and we can really get it on. We can really mix it up. Well, how does that? I didn't know. Are they allowed to choose your gloves or? Well, I don't know, how does well, it work? well, we, well I supposed to choose my own gloves. He's supposed to choose his own gloves. But the gloves that he gave me was heavyweight gloves. I'm just being honest. And he was wearing some silk ones uh, up to the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> oh. And just like 24/7, like I told everybody, I said this guy is basically fooling all everybody. I said the truth will soon. You know, everything about De La Hoya will come out. And, you know, at and, and at the end of 07, everybody had a chance to see. It came out. <laughs> Lloyd, who's yeah. tougher, Hatton or De La Hoya? Um, Hatton's probably more rugged, but De La Hoya's more, more of a Skilled. technician. Technician. Got, got better skills. Hatton's just a straight-up brawler come in, face first, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It is what it is. However, however it plays out is how, how it plays out. With the great help of, uh, of course, HBO, you know, the, the vehicle who helped, helped get me to this point. But not just HBO, but uh, Leonard Ellerbee, Al Heyman, and my whole team who helped me get to this get to this point has truly, truly been a blessing. I mean, because, you know, anytime you call, of course, you see the quotes that's in the newspaper. Anytime you call uh, Mr. Ellerbee's phone, it's, you know, if you ain't calling for 20 men and up, don't call at all. Mm -hmm. But And it's really, the number's really higher than 20 men. We just say 20 men just... You know, just to keep it at low. What do you want? To, you're just trying to kind of like just keep it like humble. That's twenty million bucks. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's a nice problem to have. Twenty million enough. You got some water for? You're uh, you're uh, undefeated, right? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, who have you ever been rocked? Where you went like, uh oh, I think I'm, I think I'm rocked, <laughs> and uh, uh, no, obviously been, pulled out of it. But, but I've been hit with a good punch before. And yeah. I said, Are you sure I chose this to be my job? Yeah. <laughs> And so, you, know, you never I, thought you were in jeopardy, though, of maybe like, wow, I, I'm I'm kind of in trouble no, over here. Absolutely not. It's just that I, I'm I'm in, I'm in still in boxing to clean the sport up. May we got Mayweather promotions to clean the sport up. We gonna we moving on. We we also do business with uh, the the mixed martial arts and um, UFC and things of that nature. You know, but boxing comes first. Boxing comes first, and. Uh, there's not a bigger or better promotion company than Mayweather Promotions. The reason why I'm I'm right where I'm at today and on this plateau is because of uh, self promotion. Mm -hmm. And can't nobody sell uh, uh, Floyd Money Mayweather better than better than Floyd Money Mayweather. Are you tempted to get into? Because Tyson had talked about getting involved with the MMA. It was talked about for a little while, and then he kind of stopped for whatever reason. Is that something that interests you at all? Or are you just well, me and myself. Um, I'm, I'm, you know. I, I'm, I'm a lot older and a lot smarter, more mature now. Uh, I look at everything as as a businessman, honestly, as a businessman. You know, we look forward to just making major moves. Any move we make, we want it to be major. Not, nothing small. Everything major. Are you guys the headline fight at uh, at WrestleMania? It's got to be. Uh, it's gotta yeah, I mean, like I said before, there's no promoter bigger than Floyd Money Mayweather. At first, I was just a preliminary bout, bout that was on the card. Now I'm the main event. And just like uh, yesterday, when you went to the press conference, no disrespect to the other wrestlers, um, I got I, t I have the utmost respect for the other wrestlers. But when you left, when you left the re when you left the press conference, it's only one name you thought about. It's only it's only one face you thought about. And it's I, 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 because I'm outside the box, and that's what we try to do. We try to be outside the box. What Mayweather promotion brings to the table, we try to make the impossible possible. We also we doing a, uh, the the Jay Z and uh, Mary J tour. We done the Beyonce tour. We uh, we done the Chris Brown and Bow Wow tour. So we Mayweather Promotions are doing so many different things, are uh, getting involved with in so many other fields. It's it's truly a blessing. Now being a, a professional fighter and a champion, I mean you obviously have to like kind of hold back if people try you in public. Um, when's the last time you had an altercation that was something that you understand what I mean? Like the reason I don't hit people in public is because I'm not a particularly good fighter, so I probably get knocked out a lot. <laughs> what stops you from doing it? That would just feel so good to be able to walk into a bar and knock anybody's teeth out. <laughs> no, we can't. Well, well, last time I got into art, uh, altercation where I was Big Show, actually. Oh yeah, that was legit, huh? Oh yeah, it feel good. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I, what me and Big Show is doing Sunday is not like what. Um, 
every other wrestler, you know, is doing. Mm-hmm. This is no holds bar. You know, may the best man win. It's gonna be yeah. It's definitely gonna be interesting. I mean, he, he, Sunday, he don't yeah. like he don't like me, and I don't like him. Period. I keep picturing like Hulk Hogan throwing Rocky out of the ring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's right. Gonna happen though, right? It's like Rocky Three. Vince yeah. is trying to get Rocky uh, Three going. Well, any, anything, anything is possible. Right. That's why we want all the fans that's tuning in right now on the best station in the nation. Listen to the best fighter in the world. You must tune in Sunday and watch. Uh, you, for, you forgot the best radio show in America. <laughs> this is the. Uh, yeah, man, man, you might as well drag us into this. <laughs> of course, your best station in bit. the nation. Uh, what best show? Okay, that's, that's <laughs> smart ass. Okay, no problem. They still got if it's a show, they still got to tune in. There you go. You're right. I will say this: I'm not a wrestling fan. I don't watch wrestling, but this fight you would watch. This. I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I want to see it, and it's really. I'm, I'm nervous a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, a, I'm honest with you guys. I'm nervous a little bit. What are you nervous about? That he's going to throw you out of the ring, or that he's going to do some kind of damage that's going to hurt you? Like for the future, it, it could happen. That was a stupid question. What else would he be nervous about? <laughs> yeah, really? He's gonna cheat, do his taxes and cheat and get caught. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. But this music means that we're running out of uh, Damn it. of show. Oh we're man, we're actually o'clock. running late. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we didn't think you were gonna make it. We're actually glad you came. Ninety-two in. three K Rock. Uh, yeah. Uh, Floyd Mayweather uh, obviously fighting the big show. Uh, WrestleMania Sunday night. I think it's eight o'clock. Uh, 7 o'clock, Jimmy, I believe, on pay-per-view. 7 p.m. on pay-per-view, and uh, the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. 7, 7 p.m. Eastern. Eastern time. WrestleMania.com so for info. How much is it, the pay-per-view? Uh, oh, no. buck fifty. <laughs> Four dollars? It's a bargain at any price. Well, I'm home Sunday. I just want to know. <laughs> yeah, now you got to check it out, right? throw down. I'm definitely right, well, Good luck, man. I, really, I would you. love to see you knock that big, dumb monster out. That would really make me <laughs> I'm happy. I'm going to try. <laughs> Well, first comes to ice, just bring a pipe in the ring. How great would that be? If you pull the pipe and just smash them. Yeah, Who are these guys, you? Jimmy? I always, got, always, 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 always got slick tricks, tricks up my sleeve. Is the entourage going to be at ringside? Yeah, they got. Oh, that's, right? that's the family. Wow, that's, man. We don't believe in talking about it. We don't, we don't believe in calling them an entourage or a posse. We believe, believe in calling it a social gathering or a family. <laughs> yeah. Well, Big Show's in trouble. Some socializing. If Big Show does the wrong thing, he's yeah. in deep yeah. trouble looking yeah. at these guys they over here in the corner. You know, yeah, lighthearted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to go over to XM. Thank you so much. Right, thank good you luck, so man. much. Thanks, God man. bless. Good luck. good luck. All right, we're off to XM, and uh, have a good day. Oh, Nick DiPaolo, Caroline's tonight. Caroline, 8 o'clock, nickdip.com. <laughs> the Opie and Anthony Show. XM202. In the world of Radio Shock Jock, the biggest are Opie and Anthony. These people say shocking things that border on offensive uh, in order to entertain their audience. I refuse to sit here and Radio think Shock that radio Jack. has to be nice. Why? Why does radio, out of Shock any Jack. other medium, have Shock to Jack. be nice? We are being Shock now Jack. held to a standard where we have Shock to be Jack. nice and make people feel Shock good. Jack. Go screw! Radio Bad Boys, Opie and Anthony. Controversial radio personalities, Opie and Anthony. Infamous DJs, Opie and Anthony. Talk show radio hosts, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Radio Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. What happened to you? I put uh, 380 to my chest and I pulled the trigger. Hey, how did help uh, show up for you? The question is, why did help show up for you? <laughs> this is where entertainment is going. <laughs> they are sick freaks. Right, so you're kind of like a um, transvestite or transsexual. Transsexual, sorry. Okay. On your underwear, do you have a sign that says "Pardon our appearance for remodeling"? <laughs> this is the worst. The worst show I've. This is the worst show I've ever been on. But enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. And here we are at XM Satellite Radio. Nick DiPaolo has made the walk. Money Mayweather has not made uh, the walk. That was a very interesting interview, by the way. Yeah, he was, uh, I mean, again, he looked like he was really tired because I heard they, they, someone said they were out late night the, the night before. And, uh, really? Yeah, I, I don't, don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his uh, family, as they said. Yeah. Not a posse. Probably uh, the most intimidating group of people I've ever seen in my life. I, I just got to be completely honest. There were four guys that were much bigger than Kenny, and Kenny is huge. Kenny is 6'5 and close to 300 pounds, I, I would guess. 
the one guy was seven foot tall, yeah. and and Kenny said he was probably pushing four hundred pounds, a yeah. pure fucking muscle. The other guy was at least six nine. Another guy was six six and six, wide, yeah, with arms like. And then and, and then they had some small guys in the area of six three, six four. Two eighty, two eighty plus. Shit. They were the biggest guys, they they reminded me, I'll tell you the scariest entourage I've ever seen or group, whatever you want to call it, was uh, was uh, when I was at a, a press junk at Fram TV, Snoop was there. Oh yeah. And and the big guy there was people didn't see the biggest guy was about seven feet, and every one of Snoop's guys was that big. There was really? six of them that big. I mean it was a wall of fucking it was a well. Japanese monster movie. It was fucking... And, and the reason, I think, one of the reasons is is because these guys have to be careful about carrying pistols because they get searched, and if they get pulled over, I mean, you're going to go to jail if you have right. a fucking pistol, so they need some kind of a visual deterrent. And when you walk into these places where they wand you, you can't have a gun. So you'd be bringing these fucking monsters. And I think also they like the way I'd rather fight a guy with a fucking gun than those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you have a better chance of living. Yeah, no kidding. I, I, I was hoping they were going to make the walkover because I want to sit down the family... <laughs> It's obvious they're very intimidating and scary and can just tear our heads off our bodies. But I wanted to, like, maybe get into what they find funny. I wanted to say this. Uh, <laughs> what do you find funny? Maybe yeah. they would, you know, Disney movies. Killing white people. <laughs> right. That's pretty much what I think. I was going to wow. go, this is the family. Which one's Fredo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the I've six never... foot five one. That's 380. <laughs> yeah. That's Fredo. I'm smart. I've never seen Nick Carter <laughs> more excited. He comes running in and he's like, what do you got to say now, motherfucker? Yeah. Nothing like, what stupid. Are you talking about? We and talk then... behind your back just like Jeremiah Wright does <laughs> ours. Mother... And then the door opens <laughs> and these monsters walk in. Monsters! Yeah, they're big dudes. They, they refuse to smile or acknowledge that... Uh... Oh, they don't like us. Let's be no, honest. That's, that's what I like about him. Floyd yeah. was nice, though. He, was, he came in and he, he like, was at the end very yeah. congenial. Shook hands with everybody in the room, and he's just, he's a gentleman, man. He's a, you know, and he'll also fucking break your jaw. <laughs> he'll kill you. And, uh, <laughs> and Jimmy, one of the best fighters in the world. Jimmy did a great job with the interview, and you were asking, like, questions about this, uh, this fight he's having with Big Show during WrestleMania. Like, it's going to be a real fight. Now, I'm not sure if it is. Because usually this stuff is, like, pre-planned, and right. they've got a thing going on. But I, I hear that... Uh, Money Mayweather actually broke Big Show's nose. Yeah. Maybe he was supposed to, like, you really? know, go in there and, and, and do right. a little something, something, but I, I right. guess it got real. Maybe because Mayweather didn't size him upright or whatever. Right. Where's, where's uh, Sam, our wrestling expert? Because he really is a big dude. You're probably Sam. not that big. <laughs> And and I don't How did want he reach him. And I don't want you to do the company line today because you, you're well known uh, with the WWE. Okay. Did Mayweather really uh, break uh, Big Show's nose, or was that all a bit? Well, it, no, it was not a bit because his nose was swollen and bleeding directly after he punched yeah. him. It wasn't like camera tricks or anything. Yeah. Now, but whether... Big Show's the type of guy he might have even said, "Just break my nose." Like, that's, 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 that's like getting <laughs> like. No, I'm serious. That's like getting a hangnail to you and I. Like well, I could take this. You don't like. Break the big show's nose, and then they offer you a gig. You know what I mean? Like if it, if he was not supposed to hit the big show hard, he wouldn't. This be. is the guy that believed Vince blew up in the limo. Come on, well, Who, why like, are we question? Yeah, this right? is the actor that plays. Uh -oh, Sam uh -oh, oh, he's ripping oh, off your hey! bit. Hey, <laughs> bit court. The, uh, Two demerits. <laughs> He uh, may have been supposed to hit him, but not that hard. Or may, you know, whatever. Right, that's but, what I'm thinking. Like, something went awry. Well, he might have just said, go ahead, punch me in the face. Just don't break my jaw. Yeah, but how is this going to look good? <laughs> he on, broke his nose. How yeah. is this fight going to look good uh, as part of WrestleMania there, Sam? I don't know. They haven't even... Sam, comment? They haven't even made clear how they're how they're working it. Like, I... At the press conference yesterday, they wouldn't... They, they won't say whether it's a boxing match Big Show or could take a lot. Yeah, how... It, Big I Show is going to be able to take a lot of body punches from Mayweather. Yeah. So how does this work? And if Big uh, Show could just get his arms around him, it's over. Yep. Yeah. Is, is the family going to be running in and that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be like, that's absolutely. what's probably going to happen. It's going to be like an altercation. The family runs in. The Big Show's got people. They all start hitting each other. Guys, it's Rocky. Was it three with yeah. Hulk? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Paulie jumps in the ring with <laughs> Right. <laughs> Paulie like, got this, the chair. This is what I picture. I, I picture Big Show picking him up and trying to bear hug him. Thunder and lips. Yeah, they, this <laughs> Thunder Lips and fucking Rocky That's Balboa. That's what I see, no? They did a thing on Raw like a couple weeks ago where the Big Show actually did pick him up. And oh, Gorilla I saw that. Slam. I yeah. saw that, yeah. Because Floyd did have his whole crew at ringside, but then basically every single wrestler in the locker room came out. They don't care about Floyd's crew. Big Show is seven feet and he's a professional wrestler. He would throw those bodyguards around. He's a fucking pro wrestler. He doesn't care about how, how, how old are. is Big Show? He's been around a while now. Yeah, but he started young. 17. I mean... 
He's City. probably <laughs> he's probably still in his thirties. Late, late yeah, late thirties. Those I guys don't so. live long, you know. Guys that big. Did you no. know that? No, no, they can't. They uh, yeah, something about their uh, heart having to pump blood up to the fucking twelve stories to their <laughs> head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some skull. I don't know. I, I'm so fascinated by guys like that. We were walking over. I was thinking, like, how nice would it be to be like a Liddell or a Rampage, where as big as those guys are. There's not a person in the room that intimidates you. You know what? You'd be a fucking problem. It's good that you're puny. I know. Because you'd be a problem. But if I mean, you're a big guy, your attitude, because you, you seem like you want it so bad just to beat people up. But, you'd be that guy that just beats people up for nothing. No, but I'm saying like to, to know like that if a guy seven feet tall came after you, like to know that you, I mean, he couldn't outbox Mayweather, but in a, he, he could get him against the wall on the floor, and then it's all over. Yeah, but that's where the posse comes in. See, they don't fight one on one. Well, I'm saying yeah, <laughs> seven on one. That's, <laughs> that's they it. travel in packs for a reason. The, up, up. the stomping. And, and in the words of Keith Robinson, they don't uh, play fight. Ah, oh, come right. on, man. Keith goes, black people don't play fight. Uh, here Just, they go. See that? That's Mayweather. That's Mayweather yeah, that's right him. there. Getting thrown. See, that's right out of Rocky Three. Yeah, yeah. He threw him absolutely. Throwing him absolutely. out of the ring, but he's caught by uh, the convenient by all people the that were yeah. <laughs> place that just happened ringside. to be in that place. Why wouldn't Big Show like turn around and go somewhere else with this? Look, yeah, Watch that's it. pretty impressive though. It just throws him over the top ring and and thank you got God to Mayweather for letting him do it too. I know. This like you said, fucking... this guy's worth trillions. And he lands wrong, breaks his shoulder, or whatever. Yeah, it's over. Hey, there's the real family jumping in. I didn't know they were part. The, oh, yeah. the whole thing. oh, yeah, they get in I, there. Nice. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. going to get... Uh, the, the big oh, black guy yeah. that's seven foot is going to, like, go uh, toe-to-toe -to -toe with oh, Big now Show. now it looks like he hurt his arm. And there's the guy here's the guy that was there today, the, the bald dude with the glasses. Yeah, yeah. And he hurt his elbow. He's he looked selling like Jim it. Brown, didn't he? He's trying to sell it. <laughs> he is selling it pretty good. He yeah. didn't really fall hard. Let's be honest here, Sam. No. Can we see that throw again? <laughs> and where does he break he his nose? He landed on a yeah, table Yeah, where does he people. punch him in the nose? That's different. That was a different one. Yeah, that was at the pay-per-view called No Way Out. That happened oh. on Larry King. No <laughs> Way what Out! What happened? How important is the crowd that you throw him into? This is a fucking... He would idea. just hit the floor? <laughs> Look at this. Look at how big this fucking dude is. I know! Look at the... Oh, yeah, the big show is just ridiculous. Why huge. is he throwing them? They all catch him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why didn't he throw them just like. <laughs> if he would have thrown them four feet over to one side, just walk just two cement. more steps, yeah. he'd have landed right on the flat cement. on the cement. Problem solved. Those guys are like five dogs waiting for a milk bone that would have <laughs> yeah. spread their arms out like this. <laughs> yeah, waiting to catch him. Big yeah. show is 36. Thanks uh, to the fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people saying, and I believe it too, it's all a work, 100%. Even, well, though, even the breaking of the nose. Come on. I heard somebody be. yell cut at the end of the scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, Bob you Bossy. Right? It's all real. It's Trust me. Yeah. Is what, what is this? this? A bit from Derek? A bit from Derek. About what? All right, well. Uh, is this the punch in the nose? Yeah, that's when the uh, uh, right. when Big Show that. came out. Big Show comes out. He's uh, getting the adulation from the fans. He's not dressed to wrestle. He's dressed in a suit. Yeah. Because he's going to be doing some big business deal, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, they're not a smiling. Look at that. He's heading to Barney's for a tie. <laughs> it's a comforter. <laughs> yeah, look, look at, at the size like the of age that quilt too. with buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, look at the Walking shoulders on this freak. Yeah, he's not so intimidated. The ring. Oh, my God. And Andre the Giant was about four to five inches taller than the big yeah. show. Yeah. And that Russian is a foot and five inches taller. Yeah, what is he? Eight, the eight, big five, show goes eight, over five. the top rope eight, when he steps five? in the Wrestler? ring. No, no, he's it's a regular It's just, guy. Uh, it's ridiculous. And now we have, we can't sit And now the blah, blah, like, blah, he's talking. When does the punch come? A uh, little later. A little later. What there the? There he goes. He grabs Rey Mysterio. All right, he's grabbing Rey Mysterio. He's also very so small. Looks very Jesus, mysterious. Looks like Gary he's Coleman. Bitch is lapping him. Oh, now he's, yeah. uh, he's taunting... Uh, Who's that? Is that supposed to be Mayweather? Mayweather in the crowd. Yeah, Mayweather's there. Oh, he's in the crowd. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luckily, he's got that front row seat. Yeah. He's a big star. Where's he going to sit? Of course. That's of course. a good point. This is director Oliver Stone <laughs> <laughs> yelling <laughs> action. Now, uh... Oh, Mayweather shaking his head like, yeah. oh, man. Oh, Mayweather. Oh, boy. Oh, he's Ray Mysterio is Mayweather's rope. friend. This looks like a convenience he's, store in Brooklyn. He's... <laughs> All right, he punched him once. That's did cute. he? Did he punch him? They're kind of in the gut a little bit. And now he pushes oh, he Mayweather. Shoves Mayweather. 
Mayweather, Mayweather comes back. back, a little push. What? Wouldn't the... He shoves Mayweather, and the fucking guys are all holding Mayweather back. Yeah, holding not him very, back. Not very good, though. Why wouldn't they? And, and oh, the, big, the show gets on his fucking uh, knees. And oh, he, oh, there it is. All right, he punched he him in did. the nose. He landed a couple yeah. of shots. He, he did kind of punch him in the him side of the face. Out of there. <laughs> now they're running. And he ran. <laughs> I don't blame him. Uh, <laughs> You know something though, the Big Show, he's he's meant to take shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm a wrestler. <laughs> Some of these guys are insane. I know it's a work, but a lot of these guys go, look, I'll t I'll take the broken That's nose the for the bit. God, no, I agree. Shane. Absolutely. You know, so I, absolutely. Yeah, Shane is looking so much like Vince these days. That's Shane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is Shane that, Is that his kid? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, Shane McMahon. He that's how old even... I am. Oh my god! Sorry. Remember when he was like, yeah, yeah, well, I fresh faced little kid. Well, I remember when Vince was a fresh face. You know, I was like eight <laughs> yeah. years old. Saturday afternoon, Channel Nine. I performed yeah, at his the Tanaka party. Brothers. Who's Shane? Oh, oh Bob, did you with Bob yeah. Levy? <laughs> I want to. I want to be in wrestling. I'm telling you, fucking idiots. I, I'm going to be a wrestler. You got the name for it, Bob. That's it. <laughs> uh, tallest man in the world is in China. He's eight foot eleven. Thank you, Sergeant uh -huh. G from Iraq. Is he really? And then you got Michael Williams from Michigan. He writes Nick Dip rules. I'm glad he's been on more. Thank uh, you. He does. He does a good job of representing the angry white man. Thank you. Or and something like that. I kept my mouth shut when the big... Angry uh, Whitey's <laughs> point of view. Yeah. And that Mayweather smelled good. <laughs> I know. God damn it, he smelled huh? good. I wanted to ask him what kind of cologne it was. Smelling. I was just sitting next to him. He smelled like a oh, rich yeah. guy. I think it was Old Spice. No, Nick, it had to be something more than that. <laughs> this, what? Is, this is what... Uh, you got something, Jimmy? No, yeah, I forgot. The guy said Sam? something. No, what did the guy say before? Sam uh, uh, kissed a, okay. a homeless well, uh, yeah. gay guy. That yeah, after he spent the morning um, blowing guys at a glory hole. Not not Sam. He didn't do that, but the <laughs> no. homeless guy no. did. Homeless guy oh, blowing guys Jesus. at a glory hole all morning. He had to brag about it that it was all morning, not just a quickie. And then Sam happened to run the run upon this guy in the street and decided he needed to kiss him. I didn't decide. Wait a Thanks, minute. Thanks, Sam. Thanks decided. for coming by. First of all, all right. My mic's not on anymore. What? You decide you needed to kiss him. Yeah, that's all that the people need to know, and drop? Nick needs to know. Who's going to be at Caroline's uh, tonight? Tonight. Thanks. Eight o'clock. Thanks, Sam, for the wrestling knowledge. And good luck with the AIDS. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you wake up with purple patches all over your forehead in about a week. It won't be so funny. <laughs> I want to kiss more guys. <laughs> Stop it's with me. the... What? It's I want to kiss more guys. Will you stop? It's not, it's not me. I want to kiss more guys. Oh, that's it. I really got to turn on wow. your mic for good now. Enough. <laughs> it's recording. Yeah, sure it is. I want to kiss more guys. Not me. Oh, Sam. Oh, Here's you, Sam. Sam. We're standing right here. All right. Thank you, Sam. This uh, was put together by Derek. Hillary Clinton is running for president. <laughs> Hillary Clinton has a spotty memory. I certainly do remember that trip. Uh, to Bosnia. These events never happened. And uh, I remember landing under sniper fire. Oh! Alzheimer's is a devastating illness that affects millions of people worldwide. Okay, listen up. Did anybody see a sniper? Did anybody see anything? Anybody see a sniper? Including Hillary Clinton. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport. Murph will receive an enemy sniper fire. Eight ball is down. <laughs> but instead, we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicle. Give generously to the Hillary Clinton Alzheimer's Foundation. It was a moment of great pride for me. <laughs> this promotional message is complete bullshit. Very, very good. <laughs> That's good. And then, yes. Hillary, and, then, and then Hillary said, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it right up that big bitch's ass. <laughs> 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 That's right. Hillary, would you like to uh, would you like to surf? <laughs> <laughs> I misspoke. What the yeah, fuck? Misspoke. They no, can that... just get away with anything they want by saying <laughs> that's a that's a big misspoke. <laughs> you ever have a gun pointed at you, fucking live gun? You don't ever forget it. Right? And then, and then uh, her, one of her stupid reps said, "Oh, what happened was there was gunfire up in the hillside. Yeah, in Nebraska. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. What's on?" And she makes it sound like, you know, they had to run from the plane to the convoy and get to the base because uh, she was under fire. That's misspeaking? Everyone no, says that's she's lying. lying. She's lying. That's, that's a fucking liar. outright lie. You yeah. can no way you can talk your way out of that. No. One. I mean, no. misspoken was like, I had red shoes on that day. No, they happen to be blue. Yeah. Uh, oh, what the fuck. fuck? Misspoke. She's a liar. And what was her comment on this now? Does she, has she said anything about this or no? No, she wants it to go away. Did she say yeah, she did say something on it. She said, uh, 
I would never go to a church with Jeremiah. That's, she tried to throw it back in Barack's lap. <laughs> right. She, she did, did say that. She goes, uh, Which yeah, you, if, you know. if I was in a church and uh, my pastor said something like that, she goes, I think it's clear what I would do. Yeah, she didn't on say. sniper fire, you but, cunt. Yeah. What would you do? <laughs> fucking liar. I don't even care about right. This is what a shitty campaign she's running. He, he was embarrassed by this fucking Jeremiah right. right thing. This was bad. Oh, right. yeah. And then this very. dumb bitch fucking. Right. Well, then again, she lied all those years. Why? Great timing, too. Great timing. It, she, you bailed him out. The, yeah. She was actually gaining momentum because yep. of the whole Jeremiah Wright thing. Had him, had him a little wobbly. And then she sticks her fat ankle in her fat mouth. <laughs> her spiritual advisor is David Duke. What a <laughs> fucking idiot she is. I wonder why he stuck a cigar in that girl's cunt. <laughs> Hillary said she'd do it, and she lied. <laughs> Oh, she's fucking sus. Uh, what a fucking beating she's taking to the poll. I'm telling you, Obama is going to be the next president. Oh, is geez. he? No, Man, McCain's no. age. It's going to be McCain. My only issue with him is, look, I do want the war to be over. Doesn't I don't matter. give a fuck about freedom for them. I don't care if they all just eat dirt and enslave each other. I want the economy better. I really don't care anymore. I'm fucking tired of it. So, I know. Yeah. But... What happened? I mean, you work till May to pay your fucking taxes. Yeah. You work till May, everybody. Yeah. And this motherfucker, is uh, no, he's going to raise them. Yeah, there's I, that's no enough qualms for me right about there. it. What they, the fuck? And then you want to give illegals drivers? How is that going to, in the debates, and, and yeah. you think you think that Clinton's campaign is digging up shit in Obama. Wait till the Republicans get a hold of them. I'm yeah. Sure they, they're probably sitting on shit right now. Oh, absolutely like they that are. guy that blew them in a... Yeah. Oh, we actually have a video of him being blown. That guy sounded like Dick Morris. <laughs> you know, we got to play Larry Sinclair one more time because it is XM. You got to hear the fine language. Uncensored. Uncensored uh, stuff. Point where I don't care who gets elected. Uh, it wouldn't even bother it me. For, but it doesn't matter. I don't have In the any, end, it doesn't matter. I, don't I think you're right. That, I'm done I don't have faith that they're going to lower the taxes. To be honest so. with you, because the war is so expensive, I don't have yeah. faith that we're going to pay less because the war is just so fucking expensive, man. It's a big expense. It's, it really is. I'm it's not... one of those huge expenses that aren't real money, though. It's yeah. too much money we're for it gonna... to be real yeah. money. Yeah, we it's already like, owe everybody yeah, everything. It's just shoved off onto some national debt that somehow, in years to come, when someone else gets in there, they figure it all out. Like, yeah. Clinton, Clinton cleaned it up for a while. <laughs> There was no debt. It was great. He had a balanced budget and everything. And that's exactly how, like, the neocons look at it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Or they go, we're not going to pay for it. Spend Fuck your fucking it. ass off. It really Fuck. is hilarious. Yeah, just that's how it. they look at it, you know? <laughs> They're like, we're not going to fucking... Cheney almost said it, like, a couple years ago. Yeah, he came close. What, what's that? A bullet cost four hundred fifty dollars Who gives a fuck? We're not going to pay this back. <laughs> It's That's really the beauty beautiful. of the whole thing. It really is. Yeah, hey, come on. Uh, Larry Sinclair on Censor. We've been playing this guy all morning long. His video is, is way better than just the audio. He's he's uh, creepy. a cool. He sounds he's like a creepy. real go-gobbler. What's he look like? He's, he's one of those <laughs> compulsive liars. That, he's a compulsive liar that believes what he's saying. Yeah. Simple as that. You think, I think he believes it? I, think, I oh, absolutely do. He really yeah. believes it. I absolutely do. I don't think this guy's trying to be a YouTube he's sensation nutty, out huh? of nowhere. I think he's like... Wait, I know how I can get my message out. I gotta make my uh I gotta make a YouTube video on I think I think I think he he's sucked a, kook. a young black cock years ago. I think he thinks it's Barack. There's probably a guy that looks like Obama. Um, you know, skinny fucking mocha latte colored guy who's really well endowed, <laughs> slender belly. <laughs> Hi. My name is Larry Sinclair. I'm making this video and posting it on YouTube because of an incident involving myself and Senator Barack Obama between November 3rd and November 8th of 1999 in the Chicago, Illinois area. The mainstream media and Obama himself has done greatly to prevent this story from becoming public. During those time periods in 1999, I met Obama at an upscale lounge in Chicago, Illinois. After having a few drinks, Obama and I left in my limo, mm. began to drink, Mr. Obama, acquired powder cocaine for my use, crack cocaine for his use. I performed oral sex on Senator Obama, mm. who at the time was a state representative for the state of Illinois. Mr. Obama knows these allegations to be true. I'm challenging Mr. Obama to come forth, be honest, stop claiming that his drug use is limited to his teenage years. Mm -hmm. 1999, you weren't a teenager. 1999, you were a state representative for the people of the state of Illinois. 1999, I performed oral sex on you in the back of my limo, <laughs> as well as in my hotel room in Gurney, Illinois, two days later. The Red Roof and Gurney. If you challenge this, the authenticity of this allegation, I challenge you 
to take a polygraph test as I will submit to as well. These allegations are true and need to be told to the public. Let the public dis decide whether Mr. Obama is being forthright and honest. Thank you. Just think how if, if this guy's father's a Republican, how bittersweet that is. Yeah. If it's true. <laughs> All right. My son sucked off this uh, black guy in the back of a limo, but it'll fucking get the Republicans in there. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow he's going to come out with one said he fucked McCain in the ass <laughs> yeah. Yeah. on a boat trip. Yeah. I also shared anal nitrate that with would be John McCain. Yeah. He keeps he coming just, out every day with a different it. one. And snowballed him in the back <laughs> yeah. of my limo. Hillary Clinton snowballed. gave me a ruby shower. Um, <laughs> I pink <laughs> something yeah. right. in pinked. the back of my limo. No. No. And she slammed it in the door and it dragged yeah. like a fucking <laughs> coat tie. Yeah. Hillary Clinton <laughs> strapped on a dildo and fucked my ass and gave me a pink sock. I licked, I licked the and tank. Gurney. In Gurney, Illinois. In Gurney. <laughs> she slammed the limo door on her own fucking pink sock <laughs> her ass. Her pink hole. sock and dragged it like a jacket sleeve <laughs> hanging out someone's fucking car door. And she jumped and went, ow, it pinches. <laughs> it pinches. Don Donald Rumsfeld tossed my salad <laughs> in the back of a taxi. I love this guy. Uh, fucking Larry rules. It Larry would be great Larry if he let this one roll for a while and then came out with allegations about uh, uh, yeah, Hillary. Exactly. Yeah. Or McCain. Yeah. I was in the POW camp <laughs> sucking McCain's cock <laughs> as he was being beaten by VC. His arms were broken when I held them behind his back to lick his asshole in, <laughs> in a mock interrogation scene. <laughs> That's right. Ah, shit. Right. I straddled Nancy Reagan's chest and titty fucked her until they both <laughs> fell off. <laughs> Ronald Reagan put his colon on my mouth and I ate it out. <laughs> yeah. I scalp fucked John F. Kennedy in Dallas in the early 60s. A, a fag zelig. <laughs> <laughs> Zell twink. <laughs> I stuck my dick in Kennedy's exit wound. <laughs> <laughs> and then came right on his frontal lobe. I masturbated on Lady Bird Johnson's shoes in the back of my limousine. And I'm only 22 years old. <laughs> oh, oh, Larry shit. Sinclair is a goose. Oh, He's that's a good question is. from Jason from Columbus. Think this guy ever got pulled over and tried to bribe a cop asking... Uh, we could take care of this right here in Gurney. <laughs> right here in Gurney. I figured we'd take care of it. You know, here in Gurney. Here in Gurney. <laughs> See, he's unzipping his yeah. fly, you know? Right here in Gurney. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Step out of the vehicle, sir. <laughs> uh, what's the, the phrase he said? A bunch of people are uh, commenting about it. Dr. Steve. Where is Dr. Steve? Yeah. Has done greatly. Nice English, dumbass. Coming in from Dr. Steve. <laughs> Well, the guy maybe is not the he's talking about the best English, but he's talking about Obama copping drugs for both of them, sucking his cock. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Steve is harping on his fucking his his dangling participles. I love, suck his cock. I love the <laughs> I love uh, the stereotypical uh, copping of the drugs, the cocaine for the white man and the yeah, crack for yeah. the black man. Regular coke and then yeah. Yeah, extra yeah, cri you extra crispy yeah, right. for uh, <laughs> Obama. Right, right. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> uh, Wouldn't it be funny if Hillary like loses another ten points next week? And Paul, so she starts trying to, you know, you know, fucking edge this story on. Legitimize going, this one? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about well, Jeremiah Wright, but... Uh, there's uh, something about how he says it. He believes what he's saying. And Bill's I'm like, you heard what happened one. in Gurney. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, we got the kiss of death uh, scene that you were talking oh, about. Oh, fucking Richard Winborn. Want to set this up there? We, did we lose... Uh, yeah, we lost him, right? Died in the... He's from the, this movie's from he's the 40s. dead. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Widmark. He died in Roxbury, Connecticut, 93 years old. Ooh, oh, wait, we're not done it. with that bit, though. One more. Joe Schneider from Pittsburgh. Bob Dole put his deformed hand on my penis in my limo. <laughs> <laughs> Held it like a pencil. <laughs> right. I terrorized Ross Perot's daughter at her own wedding while I jerked off. <laughs> The the uh, thanks, Kenny. I, I'm coming out to tell you that that wasn't a pretzel that George W. Bush was choking on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give credit here. That's uh, funny. Uh, Very yeah. good. Oh, Thomas Overbeck's on fire with this bitch. I fingered the ass of Squeaky Fromm as she attempted to shoot Gerald <laughs> Ford, and then he fell down the stairs. <laughs> I ate and his cock went in my mouth. <laughs> I ate out Barbara Bush's dried up snatch in the back of a dump truck. This <laughs> <laughs> frosty Snow White pubes. I filleted eight oh, pilots God. that were killed when Jimmy Carter tried to send them to rescue <laughs> oh, the hostages in 1980. <laughs> 
<laughs> I once fucked F.D. F.D. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I kicked him out of. I kicked Franklin Delano Roosevelt out of his wheelchair, and then and fucked, I fucked him fucked in the shithole <laughs> while Eleanor ate my girlfriend's pussy. <laughs> uh, someone is uh, saying that. He, uh, well, Chris P from Philly. Yeah, he sounds a little like Paul R. Nelson. Mm. Uh, I'm Paul R. Nelson. Stephen S. from Bayshore writes, uh, what happens in Gurney obviously doesn't stay in Gurney. No. <laughs> it's a shitty name for a town. Fucking Gurney. And the, after something, you take fucking injured people out. <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah. If you're fucking sucking dick in Gurney, <laughs> holy shit, is your life fucked. There's only one way <laughs> to go. You're bragging up. about it on YouTube. I got my, I got my asshole fingered in bedpan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually playing the funny ball in Gurney next week. <laughs> in Gurney. Yeah. Hey, right here in Gurney. Great town. <laughs> All right, we got uh, this fine scene from Kiss of Death that Jimmy was referring to earlier, and we lost uh, this fine uh, actor. He was 93 years Richard, old. Richard uh, Widmark. Yes. <laughs> you know what I do to squeeze? I let them have it in the belly so they can roll around for a long time thinking it over. You're worse than him. Telling me he's coming back. You lying old hag. <laughs> hey, that's some tough talk. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm trying. Let me go. No. On a train, huh? Hey, what? are you going? No, no. Sounds like one of Norton's so dates. No one else. Not outside. I can't move. <laughs> oh my god that's pretty edgy for like 1930 that's that's classic that's that's oh that ain't edgy for 1930 that's a comedy i like to see that reenacted with stephen hawking <laughs> no no Please, no. <laughs> Is that oh, great, the God. fucking, the, that sinister laugh as he considers, like, he sees what he's about to do, and he's like, it tickles him. It's like this, I, I crack me up. I'm going to push it down the fucking stairs. That was in the 40s. That shit goes 40s. on in nursing homes every day, you know. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I want to hear Victor Mature talking to the it. woman. Huh? Oh, Nick! <laughs> Nick! He loves fucking Nick. <laughs> Can we get that one, too? Oh, yeah. Why don't we take a quick break? We got some uh, fine Sambos I in love front it. of us right now. We got to get to uh, uh, Nick DiPaolo in studio playing Caroline's today. Tonight here in <laughs> New York City. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. What? That could be line of the day. No, I ain't going to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? I didn't hear because I was too busy helping you out. Now. Oh, you. dude. No. Thanks, Hope. Hysterically funny. I know. I just missed it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, that's so wrong. All right. Oh. Oh. Ow. Ow. Oh, hey. <laughs> Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Hey. Yes. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh fuck! Whoa, 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 what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey! What, 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 what? what the hell's going on here? Awful, awful, awful. They're just, they're just awful, awful people. Rock and roll, rock and roll. Opie and Anthony, Nick DiPaolo in studio. Uh, someone writes, can someone give that ferret-faced, caustic conservative his own Saturday night, Saturday night virus show? He kills on his shitty basement web show. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> Look, I think that was a compliment I'm right doing, there. I'm doing, I, I don't ferret face. Well, I don't know about that. How was that? I don't, uh, I don't look at you that closely I'll there. I'll take I, it anyways. I listen to you very closely, though. Oh, I'm doing blog TV from my basement. <laughs> Aren't you really? Uh, yeah. Why I'm getting not? paid to do it. You're going to be the next uh, Larry Sinclair. What are you going to be admitting? <laughs> 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 yeah. This is Nick DePaulo. Some of my biggest fans are from Gurney. <laughs> Gurney. Bunch of hair lip fags. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Gurney. <laughs> Fuck Gurney in its ass. Yeah, no kidding. And getting back to the Richard uh, Widmark thing. <laughs> A quote from uh, the great uh, Richard Widmark. 
who we lost overnight. Yeah. Uh, that damn laugh of mine. For two years after that picture, you couldn't get uh, me to smile. I played the part the way I did because the script struck me as funny, and the part I played made me laugh. The guy was such a ridiculous beast. <laughs> what a great quote. That's what he said. He was also in um, He was in uh, All the Right Moves, too. Mm. You're kidding. They played like the cranky old guy. The guy who was trying to stop them. <laughs> Turn around. He was that. He was like, Turn around and Jimmy Cry. All the right moves with Tom Cruise, you mean? Oh, no, I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah, you got it. What's, what's the movie with that song? Everybody <laughs> said, Turn around, that fucking Phil Collins song. Phil um, Collins? What are you talking about? I'm right? trying I'm so hard. You know hard. what I mean, don't you? Bonnie Tyler, you da, know. Da, da, da. Turn around and see me cry. Totally clips of the heart? No, 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 I know that. Let's turn, turn around. Turn around, bright know, eyes. But bright Listen eyes. Listen to me. If this Every is a motherfucking movie, time I look at it. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I think this has Jeff Bridges in it. Yeah. Oh, Captain Jack? No, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> they just blurting shit out. Not even a movie. No. <laughs> Captain, it just sounds like a movie. That yeah, fucking... that's it. No. It's all the right moves. Oh, against oh, against all against odds. All odds. Against, all odds. Oh, yeah. against all odds. That's, that's what I meant. All right, whatever. I had a he was in that. Yeah, you shit me. What did he play? You fucking cobweb. The father or whatever. <laughs> you were singing. Fuck, he's 112. Wow. <laughs> Turn around, and, yeah. See, that's that's, that's a fucking wife and football. Oh, song. there it is. Go ahead. Fuck it. I'll sing right along with it. I will too. Ready? No. And go. The finger, your asshole, in Kearney, <laughs> Illinois, <laughs> with a condom full of dirty load. Turn your chin, Senator. Kearney! <laughs> Gurney! I want to play this dumb thing again now. That was my brother's nickname, and I'm not kidding. We used to call him Gurney. Gurney? Yeah, when we were kids. Ah, uh, the phone's just lit today. Let's say hi to Sean <laughs> in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, just a hot bit of activity as far as this radio show goes. We've got to go down there, I'm thinking. Sean, what's up? Uh, yeah, welcome to Gurney. We like to say it's the mastic of the Midwest. <laughs> Mastic. Mastic. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to find out about Gurney. Uh, we have any... Uh, any Gurney facts? Any Do we have Gurney any facts yet? Can you get a house there for $11? <laughs> oh, you were in for that. I've oh, yeah. I love that day. That was the funniest that, that was beating wonderful. I've ever seen a town take. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gurney might be worse than Mastic. You I got anything there, man? Well, Gurney Travis is collating some facts. Oh, uh, here comes I, Travis. Sit down, Travis. I want you to Gurney is the Shirley of the Midway. I think right. <laughs> Mastic <laughs> might be a Shirley. stretch. <laughs> Yeah, Mastic's a huge stretch. Uh, what, well, that doesn't look like a very long list. Well, no, because it doesn't. It's not going to take long to prove my point. Considering that the average income is seventy-five thousand dollars, and it's home to many Chicago Bears players. Oh, oh shit! That I was hoping Gurney sucked. Eighty-two percent white. Bit. Yeah, it's eighty-two percent white. Well, let's pretend. Gurney. Gurney <laughs> what language is uh, Gurney Paradise for? <laughs> 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 Gurney sounds like a hell of a place. It, it, it really does. is. What? Brian Erlacher lives there. Ah, mm. what the hell's going on, bit. man? You're a bit killer. I'm sorry. Kill the bit. I still like this Larry Sinclair. <laughs> you got to figure because, well, the whole thing could this be be a lie. This guy's you know sucking Obama cock and snorting coke and yeah. the back of a limo in between prom dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the fuck. I can go make up some facts if you want. No, no it's right. over. Yeah, Gurney's a cool place, but... Uh, Great uh, place to get your cock sucked to meet a Bears player. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep this bit going. Gurney's a paradise. Yeah. You need a limo and a nice warm mouth from a man with a hat and some stubble. <laughs> maybe, Walt, maybe Walt the Peyton get AIDS from Mr. Sinclair. You ever think of that? That's Whoa. right. Could happen. Absolutely. Or maybe Lyle Alzado had his brains sucked out in a limo. In Gurney. <laughs> in Gurney. Right here in Gurney. Right here in Gurney. He was seen leaving with a bandana. <laughs> You're darn tootin' it was Gurney. How many people do you think out there are going to just work the word gurney into their conversation today? Gurney. 4,237. <laughs> oh, my God. We <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Fucking shut the fuck up. <laughs> Larry Literal oh, has no. made his appearance today. <laughs> just shut the fuck up. Just work in gurney, even if the person has no clue what you're what, what are you talking about? Uh, Pam <laughs> Babcock. Everybody remember who she is? Yeah. yeah. Pam Babcock. Aside from having a very funny name, she is the woman who uh, spent nearly two years in a bathroom sitting on the toilet. So long, in fact, that her ass, yeah, we much didn't... like a tree 
that mm-hmm. grows around a signpost oh. on the side of the road grew around the toilet seat, and uh, she had to be removed uh, by paramedics with the toilet seat. And, um, well, there's an update on her. Uh-oh. She's still alive. Uh-huh. Still alive. Her ass welded to a toilet seat, <laughs> and she's still alive. <laughs> You you better make that deal. Sonny was hot for that septic tank, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's bad luck for you and bad luck for me. You don't peel her ass off that thing. <laughs> By the way, I was in that line waiting for that bathroom. That was in an Applebee's, right? You <laughs> fucking cunt. Uh, well, let's see. Her, I guess, uh, living oh. boyfriend, Corey McFerrin, 37, has been charged uh, with a misdemeanor count of mistreatment of a dependent adult. Mm-hmm. Is that a you, Wait can, a you can get in trouble for that? Is she paralyzed? Is there something wrong? I mean, other than her ass screwed to the seat. Uh, the woman's aunt said she calls daily to the hospital to ask how Babcock's doing, and uh, asked to talk to her. Babcock has agreed to talk to her only once for about ten minutes. And she had to go take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard uh, from her since. It's been seven months. <laughs> <laughs> During one call, Babcock spoke little and mostly listened to the her aunt. Uh, recounted happy family memories, <laughs> like uh, swimming, camping, and boating. <laughs> but every memory probably was like, yeah, do you remember that time we went to the soup break? They had such a nice bathroom. <laughs> yes, what a, great to- what a great toilet. <laughs> That's yeah. what she talks about. It had the old-fashioned toilet, the kind you can sit under for two years. <laughs> like, like a tape of Farsight calendar behind yeah, it. Behind it, with the old pull chain. Happy family memory. Remember she only took 11 days to shit. <laughs> remember that? We had a party? for uh, what is she eating spackle and fucking chicken quesadillas <laughs> mixed <laughs> uh, 12 turkey wraps and a pound of silly putty <laughs> fucking veins are popping out of her head like a fucking somebody fill in the blank i'm very tired right now uh, god oh, damn you, you got it bro uh, <laughs> Ooh. You can throw uh, oatmeal in there if you want. <laughs> I, I know where you're going. Babcock. Egg, egg whites will do it, too, my friend. Well, That's you know right. The, the, Protein. The, you're right. The local diner, the guy who would always send her food over, said, I knew there was something wrong because she would always have she would always have grits and a brick on it. <laughs> <laughs> Slight brick. <laughs> Sounds too much like grits. Oh, my God. <laughs> she doesn't believe in fruit. Her wounds are still very serious. Her wounds. Her wounds are still serious. She's not out of the woods by any means. <laughs> She's a very sick girl. Was she on a toilet for a month, really? No, for years. Two years. Two years. She sat on the toilet. Nobody checked on her? This guy must love her to death, huh? Uh, let's see. McFerrin told authorities Babcock feared leaving the bathroom and uh, may not have left it for two years, although he said uh, uh, he was unsure how long she was in there. He said that he took her food and water daily. He said that he repeatedly asked her to come out, but she usually replied saying, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Imagine what the living room looks like. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll come out of the shitter tomorrow. <laughs> How awful is that? He wants to eat her pussy. He's got to put his chin on the fucking, like, hanging hand. The oh. 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 He hasn't had fucking anal sex in two years, this poor bastard. <laughs> Unless he could, like, fucking hit a big dick and he could squat on her <laughs> and aim it down and fish hook it up into her took us. Into her Fish hook it into her took Right up into her rear. Was it just a very comfortable toilet seat? What the fuck's going on? Is she oh. is she disabled? I don't, uh, really, I don't I, get this th- at all. Th- they're not giving enough details. People want the fucking... They don't want to know the story. Yeah, it makes me wonder. How did her ass grow to the seat like that? Nick's she, whole, she'd have to sit there. I can't get past what Nick's whole rant about it. <laughs> the fucking blood oh, popping God. in her forehead. <laughs> She's sitting in there from February to November. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just straining her fucking hemorrhoids, sound like bubble wrap popping. <laughs> they, they tell you, yeah, they tell you not to sit on a toilet too long after yeah. you take a dump because you—that's what causes hemorrhoids. You yeah, know? your Man, fucking shit'll hang out. Like, yeah, she got like Napa Valley grapes oh, hanging out of her ass. Oh, you dude, bang her. It's like melted mozzarella coming down into the fucking toilet bowl. Oh. Hanging in there. What was the mixture again? Quesadillas <laughs> yeah, and what? Fucking spackle and chicken quesadillas. <laughs> Fucking broads. That would uh, give you a hurting, man. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the fucking... 
It's just hilarious that, to me. That really is some type of uh, mental illness oh, that uh, the boyfriend was such an enabler. That's terrific. He must have loved her. She was in there for two years. He knocked twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did he shit? He shit uh, in the kitchen sink with his cousin, <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> I don't know. Cousin Teddy. <laughs> I would have taken... The one way to get her off that scene, he should have just karate kicked her off and watched her flesh rip and then oh, laughed God. at her when she laid there by the kitty litter. Like, get up, you lazy fucking psycho. Like a pesky label that won't peel off of something. <laughs> it leaves a little on the seat. Yeah, like an apple with a yeah. little fucking... Comes off her ass. Rip her off like a mattress tag. <laughs> You're should've, embarrassing me in front of my friends. Should have tied a chain around her neck and tied it to her back to a dump truck and just pulled her up. <laughs> Toilet and all. Dragged her across the street. Still stuck to her fucking ass. Uh, let the neighbors get a good look. This Pam. is true. and it's, You oh, know what's ironic? Yeah. Gurney happening. Gurney It was in, in Gurney. Gurney. <laughs> right here in Gurney. What a lying cocksucking town. In that's Gurney. Her. She couldn't shit right here in Gurney. <laughs> How great would a fire have been in that place if she's just in the bathroom begging for help? <laughs> Like where? <laughs> shit or get off the... Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> shit or grow to the pot. <laughs> oh, my God. He could have at least gone in there once a week with a spatula. <laughs> yeah, and he just, like, flipped her a little bit. <laughs> her name is Pam. You think she wouldn't have gotten stuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need a no-stick Teflon toilet seat. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <Jimmy. laughs> Mr. Obama knows these allegations to be true. Yeah. I'm challenging Mr. Obama to come forth be honest, he stop claiming forth. that his drug <laughs> use is limited right, to his teenage years. 1999, you weren't a teenager. 1999, you were a state representative for the people of the state of Illinois. 1999, I performed oral sex on you in the back oh. of my limo, wow. as well as in my hotel room in Gurney, Illinois, two days later. <laughs> Gurney. In Gurney. Right here in Gurney. That makes it funny. The that Gurney story even funnier. I know, I love Gurney. Because that might be a town where you would get a you know, if you're famous, you want to get a secret blowjob from a <laughs> yeah from a limo driver. Who's gonna find you in Gurney? <laughs> Gurney. I bet Obama's saying there's a lie. The whole thing happened in '96. <laughs> How great would it be if he took this whole thing seriously and actually agreed to the lie detector test and they appeared yeah. together somewhere? <laughs> I want to see like Newt Gingrich on Fox tonight talking about this. Yeah, trying to clean it up though. <laughs> <laughs> Controversy coming out of Gurney. Yeah, the no today. spin zone. Yeah, I, we're here in Gurney. It starts here. Uh, Stephen S. from Bayshore is writing uh, that uh, good old uh, Miss Babcock needed a visit from Richard Winmark. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Push her, push her down the Tie stairs with a cord, her in that dopey toilet of hers. Oh, oh toilet. <laughs> you know, just laughing. All of a sudden, you just start unscrewing the toilet. She's like, what are you doing? You know what I've I had do to shit is? <laughs> right. shit is? I've had it. Just tumbling down the stairs of piss and shit flying out of the... <laughs> you shit and old egg. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you hog the bathroom a little more? <laughs> I give it to him right in the colon. I've been a hold of a piss since 1937. Oh, God. Uh, mm -hmm. He's just giggling right. at the anticipation <laughs> of her fucking just careening down the stairs. <laughs> Tearing off the seat at the That's bottom of like. the stairs. <laughs> Well, that's a wonderful um, update, Anthony. Thanks for bringing that. Oh, to no us problem. There. I uh, enjoy terrific. little updates like that. We don't sure. do enough of them. I don't. I hey, hope she's all right. Uh, yeah, we've pretty much done fine. all the news for today. It's kind of a slow news uh, day, so we're going to go into slow news day trilogy. Ooh. Oh, okay. we like to do this from time to time. We find uh, stories that are uh, that are worth playing on slow news days. This is what the news does. So, let's take a listen. Whoever said three's a crowd probably never saw this. Three people, one board. We're trying to break out a, a new record, possibly today, with a triple snowboard. We have three people, one board. They already hold a place in the Guinness Book of World Records with their two-man tandem board, and now they're adding more. Once they get up the mountain, they bolt the boards together 12 feet in all. But having three people in the driver's seat took some getting used to. Um, it was good. It was great. Ugh. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> How many times did you guys fall? Um, I think maybe three times. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> Once oh they perfect God. their new skill, oh Sweet God. says they'll want to teach those who otherwise may not be able to snowboard on their own. Put it into the adaptation center for handicap, uh, yeah, that's autism, what we want. stuff like that. Yeah. People that don't aren't able to ride stuff like that. You put them in the middle and cruise around and just enjoy it. Yeah, that's fucking that's have so. Rain Man <laughs> crashing into me on the fucking <laughs> black diamond. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Stupid fucks. Yeah, put autistic kids on the fucking mountain so they can make me look worse as a skier and a fucking snowboarder, you ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> we strapped 11 people to a toboggan. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> exactly. That's why we're doing the fit. I know. It's, it's beautiful. It, this shit passes it at like yeah. 5 o'clock in L.A. It's the top yeah, news is, story. Yeah, yeah. We love this bit. It's, uh, <laughs> it's we, great. Get, we get the slow news day stories and we play them for everybody. <laughs> Listen to this one. This uh, is horseradish. You're most likely to have come across it as the powerful paste wasabi that's eaten with sushi. 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 It's eaten with sushi. Sushi. What is sushi? Fucking dumb limey. Oh, my God. Sushi. Yeah. The powerful wasabi. (laughs) That's eaten with sushi. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I just pictured his fucking green English teeth. (laughs) Wasabi all over him. Are the same color as wasabi. <laughs> you know, my breath smells like sushi. <laughs> <laughs> eh, fucking lamies. Fucking A, man. That's eaten with sushi. <laughs> and this is a. <laughs> sushi! With sushi. Sounds like a hooker from Detroit. <laughs> sushi! Oh, yeah. It's uh, one of those things. We go over and over again now. That's eaten with sushi. <laughs> sushi. You know how to say sushi, you dummy? He knows. You yes, of knows. course. That's eaten with sushi. And this is a new design of fire alarm. Inside these cans, the smell of the horseradish has been extracted and carefully stored. In Japan, scientists have been putting the new alarm to the test. Having allowed the subject to slip into a deep sleep, a button is pressed. The alarm triggered and horseradish pumped into the bedroom. Wake up hungry. <laughs> this man, like almost all of those taking part in the test, woke up inside two minutes. What? <laughs> Nick's just fucking annoyed. What? F- this is even too stupid for this bitch. <laughs> this is fucking Jesus. What? Why don't you just... Billy Martin used to have a bit about how poor they were as kids, and they fucking have fire alarms, so their dad used to tape Jiffy Pop to their bedroom door. <laughs> so if the fire... <laughs> Oh, and then Billy shit. Martin, that was a good bit. That's funny. funny. So the, this is supposed to wake you up, the smell of the wasabi? Yeah. In two minutes. That's good. You, you fucking barbecue in two minutes. Yeah, I would think a loud noise would be more effective than an <laughs> right, odor, you thanks. dummy. Yeah. Why don't you have a fat chick come in who just ran 12 miles in August? <laughs> That's it. I'd rather put have... her ass an inch from my nose. How about this? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, it has to smell like sushi. <laughs> Sushi. What oh is it? Oh my god, the we... smell of sushi or. <laughs> what a dumbass. Two minutes is a long time for a fire to ravage Jesus your bedroom. Jesus Christ. Wake up. A... Wake this up. A... <laughs> this is my new favorite S word to say. It, sushi. It used to be sausage. Yeah, this is fun. Sushi. Sausage. Everyone's, yeah, just gonna call it sushi now. Sushi. So my, you wanna go out for sushi? My wife's breath is gonna wake me up if there's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Once the lights are back on, he explains that the smell reminded him of times when he'd swallowed too much horseradish by accident while eating sushi. (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't even a mistake the first time, okay. Guys, you get the most unnatural speech (laughs) kicking I've ever heard. Speech (laughs) pattern. They stupid English. They all talk like this. (laughs) It goes up at the end. (laughs) <laughs> the newscasters are always doing this thing. <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, God damn While it. eating sushi. <laughs> the scientist conducting the tests says he's excited <laughs> by the invention's potential to save the life of those with hearing disabilities. Oh. With oh. tests continuing, the makers of the horseradish alarm are hoping to have it on the market within the next two years. Who the fuck's going to buy a horseradish sushi. alarm? I know. Why don't you just make it smell like smoke? <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? Uh, Fucking idiots. We're working on Tabasco eyedroppers. (laughs) For the visually impaired. Visually impaired. (laughs) Those useless orbs do nothing anyway. Fucking deaf people. Fuck them. Yeah, those stupid, fuck. those Burn. candy dishes on their head. <laughs> oh, is that what it's for? That people? Yeah, those fucking awful, just those worthless fucking orbs. Fucking burn. I just used your word, orbs. Don't forget to replace <laughs> your batteries orbs. and your wasabi. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, horseradish. Well, oh, continuing with the uh, right. slow news day uh, bit, this one's just terrific. 
They are big and they are yellow, but apparently they are not very green. The free the phone Asian books that you get. Yes. Ah. <laughs> 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 A type of sushi. <laughs> they are big and they are yellow, but apparently they are not very green. The free phone books that you get on your doorstep could oh. come with an environmental cost. Oh. And in this age of the Internet, some are wondering, are they worth printing at all? Asking questions, getting answers. Dennis Shanahan joining us live with this phone book discussion. Dennis? Oh. Well, Sam and Pellet, we need a phone a book discussion. Yeah, let's get a, a round phone. table going. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. We need a phone book discussion. Well, I hope, I hope you're taking bad. calls on this subject, <laughs> you <laughs> fucking nitwits. <laughs> A phone book discussion. I still need my phone book because I want to see what you could do in Gurney. <laughs> Gurney. <laughs> discussion, Dennis. Well, Sam and Palace, the good news is these books showing up on doorsteps all over Sacramento right now are 100% recyclable. And we're going to go to Club so to Officer Kenny, well, they're very good when, when questioning a shine because you put it against his head and it doesn't leave marks. <laughs> That's all <helpful>. still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> up on doorsteps all over Sacramento right now are 100% recyclable. So if you don't plan to use it, you can give it a chance at a second life in a recycle bin. But everybody gets these books every year, whether you want them or not. And it looks like that is not about to change. So the phone books are recyclable? Aren't uh, they fucking paper? They're fucking paper. Or aren't they always recyclable? If I sure. buried a phone book a fucking week later, it would be gone in <laughs> 1972, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's gone. the fucking point here, you jack-offs? What are you, phone books made of vinyl in Sacramento? <laughs> yeah, we switched from leather to fucking paper phone books. We found the ones made of cement weren't disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking paper from a tree, you dumb twat. <laughs> Well, they want to save the trees, I guess. Uh, oh, your carbon footprint, uh, if I hear that again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know. How big is your carbon footprint? I'm, I'm a white guy. It's very small. <laughs> <laughs> it happens every year at this time. The march of the AT&T phone books. The company prints one million of them for Sacramento alone. One copy for every home and business. But we asked around, who still uses these books? People don't use the internet, I guess. My mom uses them, but uh, people stuck but in toilet seats on the computers. <laughs> the directory is still really a big part of our business. Vanessa Smith from AT and T in Sacramento says the company has no plans to phase out or even scale back phone book distribution. Our advertisers still find that it's a great way to increase their business. They get a lot of referrals from the yellow pages. Liar! The company urges people to recycle their old copies. Oh my God! They're still talking about this story. <laughs> We should let it go. It's going to go right. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, they're still talking about this? <laughs> they're living fucking a life at a breakneck pace in Sacramento, huh? <laughs> Holy shit. I was just checking my email. They're, they're still talking about this, right? <laughs> We're going to do 20 minutes on pamphlets tomorrow night. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> a roundtable discussion on pamphlets. Yes, we're having a discussion <laughs> on paper book. thing that we are discussing is, Friday is night. taking off. we got to find more paper products to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiots. Friday night calendars. <laughs> Flyers, the word. Of the Jews, <laughs> dude. I would Flyers. rather I would rather watch the local news than any sitcom that's on TV. Oh, I laugh my ass off every oh, fucking day. In L.A., they have to close with a fucking story about an animal every, every just night. to yep. make you feel good. They'll go from a story: twelve kids died in that fire. Now here's the story about the kitten who dialed nine one one. Right. Which is fucking outright Because some lying. dope told them, you know, you got to end with something yes, nice. After all the horrific yes. shit they just showed you. It's the same yeah. mentality like in a movie when they show an animal get thrown off a bridge. They have to show up, pop up, and walk away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? You just fucking defeated the purpose. Oh, by the way, there is more. This is oh. where many of them Sorry. go. The Sacramento Recycling and Transfer Station, where the remains of the old books are sorted and compacted. Oh, hey, you want to order a pizza? There's no way to tell exactly how many get recycled, but we do know that last year, Sacramento Elementary Schools collected 45,000 of the old books as part of an annual incentive program from AT&T and the city. And they will get credit for those books in terms of money for their supplies. If you don't want to take it to the school, you can always put it in your blue recycling bin, and it'll get to the same place. Now, there is a 1-800 number on the cover of every phone oh book what? where you can... Enough. Are they still talking about this? What happened? Yeah. I think you it was a two-hour documentary. <laughs> You can drill a hole in it and fill it with warm butter and fuck it. Then he uses this for phone books. Right. You Much, can, yes. <laughs> warm butter. <laughs> Paint a baby face 
on it and throw it in a dumpster. <laughs> All right. We get it. It's a phone book. Yeah, don't teach the kids math and English. Have them fucking... Oh. It's not radioactive this, waste. It's a fucking this phone book. ridiculous that they're still talking about we this. When's California going to go away? It's a big waste. Of every phone book where you can get information about where to recycle the books, but here's an interesting statistic: for one won't be um, ton of these, to produce one ton of these <laughs> takes 7,000 gallons of water and 4,000 kilowatts of electricity. That's mm -hmm. according to the city of Stop Sacramento Waste second, Services. Please. So there is. Let uh, me just that soak means in. This goes longer, Jimmy. <laughs> but, uh, wait, that's Seven so interesting. Thousand yeah. gallons of water. It uses seven. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, wake up! You're not at all. Jimmy, was, what happened? I was just listening to that interesting fact. And yeah. what was it? What did you learn? There's something about those kilotons and the whole... <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh... How much? How much uh, electricity? Oh, oh I, I, I didn't pass I the know. test. Right. I don't know how many of those you have to pile on top of your dick to flatten it completely. <laughs> how many phone books on your cock make it go flat? <laughs> like a hammerhead shark. That's the question I want to... Where's Arnold Diaz? Where's that fucking mustachioed <laughs> PR? Shame on you! Shame on you! That guy with that fucking rat. porno mustache and a chemo hairdo. <laughs> guy looks like he's got two white cells left. Fucking, oh, we found the lady who got ripped off by Verizon. Let's take a look. Show up at my door. I'll kick you right in the nuts. <laughs> you fucking half a girl, you. Really is a fucking hall monitor cunt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should have a fucking armband on. Fucking. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on your skin. You look like James Woods' ball sack. Put on some foundation and a hat before you do the next story. We hate those fucking guys. Shame, shame, shame. Why don't they get beat up? When are we finally would, just... They, I'm sorry, I got, Go ahead, I got nothing to say. They just did shame on you stories, but it was all interracial couples. <laughs> they bring their parents over. Shame, shame on you. Just a big lily white finger pointing <laughs> at the naughty blonde. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. She, she married a sanitation worker. Shame, shame. Shame on you. They find the families with the Down syndrome child. <laughs> But it's God's hand pointing at them. Shame, 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 shame on you. Shame on you, and you're pointing at the womb. <laughs> pointing at the sonogram. Big fucking head in there. Oh my god. <laughs> he shows up and they're throwing like a clothes basket over the kid's head. <laughs> Be funny. You only, you only did shame on you. You only focus on rape victims. Shame, shame. <laughs> Jimmy! Uh, <laughs> Sonogram looks like a puffin' stuff character. <laughs> I thought it was shame on Jews. <laughs> That's what I thought it was all these years. They're always ripping us off. Oh, shit. <laughs> shame, shame on Jews. <clears throat> all right, more about the phone books. Ah. Interesting statistic for one... Um, ton of these to produce one ton of these takes seven thousand gallons of water and really? four thousand kilowatts ah. of electricity. That's according to the city of Sacramento Waste Services. So there is definitely an environmental aspect to all of these, but the advertisers say they're profitable. And a lot of people we spoke with said they just like thumbing through the book instead of clicking on the computer. Does yeah. that? No, yeah, they don't. That. No, they is don't. Is it worth the cost? I guess they'll determine that. And then yeah. you get the weird. Le <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Do, do, exactly. do they really? Is it uh, something that uh, we yeah. actually? Uh, would do is a. I want to know how many how many phone books you can roll up like a newspaper and fit in her vag. Are you a three phone booker? Fucking, it's all fuck. I'll tell you who uses phone books: old people and comedians on the road. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, looking for whorehouses. Escorts. I don't bring my left. I used to always. Yeah. Really, fun, oh the phone God. book. Oh yeah. Sure. Did you go out to the phone booth with that little hinged thing? That You're like, yes, on uh, Maple Street Ave in Gurney. <laughs> Gurney. <laughs> Gurney. Right here in Gurney. I'm going to need to go to Gurney. <laughs> Holy shit, is that funny? I'm looking Babe, for the big blue ox. That You're is in news, Gurney. Though, in California. They actually believe in all that shit. Who came up with Slow yep. News Day? The bit, Slow News Day. Danny. Uh, uh, Danny. Yeah, keep another, that one going, Another Another one out of the park. We want, uh, we want another installment of uh, Slow News Day. Wow, is that fucking funny shit? Hey, uh, is Big A coming in tomorrow? I think he's coming Me. in tomorrow or Friday. Or, well, tomorrow is Friday. We don't know. We don't know? I'm trying to get Big A in here. We're going to give his tongue a nice scraping. That's disgusting. His breath is horrific. Who's Big A? Do I know him? 
Uh, you'd know him if you saw him. He's a big guy. That guy? From ONARadio.com. He can't say words that start with S T. Is Big A listening? I'm him call the show. You had a kid in there doing some gross shit the last time I was here over there, and his girlfriend was watching on the bleachers. Who the fuck was that big? This is Big A, Nick. All right. For your viewing. Andrew, he's a big sweet. He's a big. Love Andrew. We really do. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> He's got a mouth under his mouth. <laughs> Look at that! Holy he accidentally shit. feeds yeah. a whole meal into his chin. He's got like eleven breadsticks <laughs> in the Olive Garden. He's tucking under his second chin. He had a huge tumor removed from his neck. You would think. Uh, Are you serious? Did he? Yes. <laughs> what do you have it replaced with a tumor? <laughs> <laughs> it traded to him. Sorry, He looks like guy. a fucking eagle who hasn't shit in about a week. <laughs> He's actually a male nurse who is known as the infant biter. <laughs> <laughs> that does look like one of those uh, he should be wanted famous. posters. Yeah, yeah. He, That's uh, like for for just the most awful type of rape. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it looks like. Chin rape. <laughs> this we're, man was seen. <laughs> we're gonna scrape his tongue though. Uh, Nick, you do that uh, that tongue scraping stuff. Uh, not since I quit gay sex, no. What, what is it? <laughs> How does that work? They, they sell these little spoon contraptions, and you yeah. just scrape uh, your, your tongue. For, what, what am I looking for, exactly? Keeps the bad breath away. And oh. what, what comes up, what, what collects on the spoon is quite interesting. Yellowish, uh, greenish. I brush my tongue. A bit of brown in there. And we're, gonna, <laughs> and we're gonna have someone swallow the uh, contents. No, you're not. Hell yeah! yeah. You gotta be shitting me. Or at no. the very least, maybe do another mustache. Oh, we got Big A. Uh, Big A. Big A, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Uh, out there, everybody. We're good, Big A. We really want you to come in for that uh, tongue scraping. <laughs> Sound like his doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really need you to come in for the tongue scraping. Um, I'm going to try coming tomorrow. Um, I haven't found out if I can take off yet. But Does he have a tongue? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we're going to get a garden hoe, actually, to get at that tongue. <laughs> Big A. That's fucking gross. I know it's demeaning, but we really need you for another bit. We want, we want to, you know, scrape your tongue, and then we might make mustaches or something with the the goop. Look at Jimmy! Look at Jimmy! Look at Jimmy! Look at Jimmy! The goop! The goop! You should put him in those little tartar sauce containers. <laughs> <laughs> put him next to a sandwich. Are you a in big sandwich? Uh, yes, I am. All right, so you're gonna scrape now. The thing is. <laughs> Don't try to gussy yourself up by brushing your teeth or doing, you know, anything like that. You got to, you know, just come in like you would normally come in. What, you, you expect them to buy a toothbrush between now and tomorrow? <laughs> I don't like all this knocking of Big A. Oh, I'm sorry, Big oh, A. I oh. forgot you were still on the phone. And also, I listen to the program also, OP. What happened? What happened? I was listening to the program. Also. Oh, he was listening to the whole show. Oh, okay. Called it a program. The program. Well, what are you going to do later? Watch Mike this? Douglas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more going to watch my stories. <laughs> you all right, Big A? Is he all right? This you all right? Big A, what's up yeah, today? Yeah. All right. I'm a little tired. Yeah, you don't I'm sound right. it. You sound like you're full of piss and vinegar. Or whatever. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Nick. Hey, uh, Big A, what's pissing you off today? The fact he has to have his tongue straight next week. Nothing, man. Just tired. No, but like you know, this this life thing is tough. Like everyone has something that pisses them off. What's what's your thing today? What's annoying the hell out of you? Mm. Uh, Turtleneck. Uh, um, traffic. <laughs> traffic. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you driving? Uh, yes. <laughs> and traffic. <laughs> traffic huh? Where are you right now? Well, uh, I'm uh, back in the Bronx uh, right now. I was in Manhattan before. And you're in the Bronx, and the traffic is what's bothering you. <laughs> 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 do, do people bother you in the Bronx? Nobody bothers me. No. Yeah, it's probably like bad luck. Right. Yeah. Don't don't fuck with them, man. Don't, <laughs> they don't always know fuck that with them. You don't pester a stegosaurus. <laughs> All right, Big A, we're gonna get you in here tomorrow, right? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I'll call. 
How, how's the eyebrows? Are they growing in yet? <clears throat> Not really. Yeah, we shaved his eyebrows. Cause you know, eyebrows. <laughs> eyebrows do have this weird thing where it's not like a hair on your head. Sometimes, it takes it, so, and sometimes it doesn't grow back. Yeah. Sometimes they just don't grow back. Yeah, you can draw them in though. Yeah, pencil <laughs> them in. Brick red great. Crayola crayon. <laughs> have like actually use something water soluble and carry around the marker and a, a washcloth so you could change your emotions really quickly. <laughs> like I'm so m mad, dude. Let's do that tomorrow. We'll do a okay. fucking sharpie and a roll of bounty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's tomorrow's bit. This you know since we got back from vacation, it's all about bits every day. Tomorrow's oh, bit is uh, eyebrow fun with Big A. Yeah. It'll be like that game with the magnetized. He almost looks like that guy. Right, right. The, the magnetic <laughs> dust yeah. and the magnet, the metal dust, and you got to kind of arrange hair and a mustache and fucking yeah, eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Let's oh. and let's have a competition. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a competition to yeah. see who can come up with the best eyebrows for Big A. We'll pencil them in. Okay. Eyebrow fun with Big A on nice. the next Sophie and Anthony show. <laughs> I want to make Mister Spock eyebrows on him, just those pointy ones. Yeah. And then I want to put like. The, uh, how about like the old Joan Crawford ones? <laughs> 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 Tina! <laughs> Big arches. I hate when these fuckers are on to us. Bobby D from Brockton. Come on, Opie. Keep reaching. It's not quite 11 yet. Look, we're trying. Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> we gave you four and a half solid hours of radio today. <laughs> yeah. Deal with it. All right, Big A, we'll see you soon, okay? Yeah, definitely. Bye-bye, Andrew. Bye-bye. Where do you find yeah. a guy like Big A? It was the oddest thing. Uh, we were doing the um, <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> exactly. Part of the Museum of Natural Science. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning the, against a wall. On the business end of a dead prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, Jimmy. Great line, and it reminded me of something. They did our bit on TV. What? I actually read it on Whackbag. I had no idea. Could you get Whackbag up? They did the dead hooker bit. What, 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 what bit? Like one of our favorite bits to do is the dead hooker bit, where like a businessman, he goes on uh, the road, yep. hasn't had sex with his wife in a long time, figures he could get away with one. We're talking yeah. about the guy that's deciding, you know, I'm going to just get away with one. Yeah, Elliot Spitzer. Hires up a hooker, <laughs> she comes to the hotel, and, and something horrific happens, and now the hooker's dead, <laughs> and the phone's ringing, it's the wife giving you the update on the kids, and you're trying to figure out how to get rid of the dead hooker. There's a dead hooker right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh. They did that on American Idol. They stole your... <laughs> but they fucking... Did... What's the bit? Who then? stole Help it from me you? Out. Not that it was stolen, but uh, was it CSI or something? Law and Order Law... Criminal Intent. Oh, they, they Criminal did Intent. Ripped from the headlines, right? And was he, like, talking on the phone with his wife while the dead hooker was laying there? Sitting on the dead hooker. That's, That's crazy. Crazy. Yes. But, dude, then we're Dick's like... still in the dead hooker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, honey, honey I'll be home. I, come? And, I gotta call you back. And then we went further with the bit. I mean, this bit took all day, but then all of a sudden the guy is wearing, like, a bunny suit because that's his fetish, but he's got the head off the bunny suit as he's crying, and the hooker's dead on the floor. Why is he crying? Because uh, he's, he's just thinking his career is shot. His career, he's like a professional his family guy. life. How does he tell his wife? The so then he written. starts getting these harebrained schemes <laughs> of how he can get rid of the hooker. So he's just sawing so her, he's sawing her in, the, in the bathtub and crying because this is horrific to him. He's just a business guy who wanted to get fucked. And there he is sawing her legs off and crying. <laughs> <laughs> and just disgusting things are happening because he doesn't really know how to do it. Her intestines are falling out. <laughs> and he's just full say hi of to blood. The kids. And yeah, he's, he's leaving he's, evidence everywhere and he's trying to like... <laughs> he's doing things out of order. Like the body's laying there just mutilated and he gets like blood handprint on the wall and he's rubbing it off already but there's blood everywhere. And, and his wife's like, say hi to Tommy. He got an A in French. <laughs> yeah. Tommy, how you doing, Daddy? He'll be home soon. Yeah, yeah. He's crying. There's blood. <laughs> he knows the blood is seeping through the floor. He's wondering if it's dripping into oh, the next room. Just yeah. Blood everywhere. We're, we're trying to sell this uh, to Comedy Central, by the way. Why not? Yeah, we got a great idea, and we need someone to listen to us. I think they animated <laughs> this bit as well. But what was the CSI, the uh, Law and Order episode about? It was it was kind of similar. Uh, according to this gentleman, Mayor Menino on Whackbag, uh, <laughs> the poor bastard at the beginning of the awesome. show meets up with a hooker, and in the morning wakes up and she's dead, oh, and boy. there's a picture of him lying next to her dead. Wait, a and picture then, of him oh, lying next, next to, to her. her dead. Okay. Well, good thing this was with us, Senator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know what That's happened. pretty much it. It'll be like, 
She's got no one. Yeah, yeah. She's got no one. Don't worry. We'll oh, take family. care of it. She's got no one. Like can never happen. Oh, uh, dude, our scenario just keeps going and going. Oh, man. <laughs> just going. The, the maid is knocking on the door, and you <laughs> you know you only have a certain amount of time to try to figure out how, how to get the remains. <laughs> what are you? I got the do not disturb on that goddamn thing for a week. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Robertson, you, you're checking out today? Oh, the of. Uh, I'll need the room a little. Can I have a late check? Check <laughs> late out. Check. <laughs> I need a late check out. The cell phone is vibrating on the fucking. <laughs> God. I need a late check out. The wife. fucking car service is beeping in yeah. front of the hotel. Yes. Oh, try to shove the body into your suitcase. And open. <laughs> open. You can carry 125. Oh God! What's that? Oh God! <laughs> Are you checking anything today? The girl's foot is sticking up. You put it up on that fucking conveyor belt. You see the fucking fat ankle with a pop on it. But the beauty of the bit is the guy's like, he turned 40, 50. He's like, one time. I just one thing. Gonna do it. One wrong. time. He's gonna, he thought about it for so fucking long. And any other day, it would have been fine. He picked the wrong day, the wrong hooker. <laughs> <laughs> loving wife, everything. And it almost has nothing to do with him. She just OD. Well, yeah, a, no, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah, sure, she had, like, fucking blocked artery. Yeah. yeah some yeah, diabetes. Just, had nothing to do with him fucking. Died. He didn't do anything. But the, but he panics because, hey, he, how, what's he going to do? He's got a wife and kid. <laughs> exactly. So he's got to cut her up and then try to get her out of the hotel. It's like one of those dreams. You have a dream like that, and you oh, it's, just it's get, real until it you It gets wake worse up and, and worse. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be. And he's trying to cut her up and clean the blood up at the same Someone time. Someone's reminding us, because we go back to this bit, because we're trying to like perfect it into the perfect bit. Uh, they're reminding us that not only is he wearing the bunny suit, it's it's bloody. There's blood all over the bunny suit. Oh, yeah, the bunny, where it gets kinky, and he figured he'd try out some kink. So he puts on a bunny suit, and the bunny suit's just covered in blood. <laughs> Someone is calling us hacks. Chris from work. He says, Why? Um, you're a bunch of hacks. 1998 movie called Very Bad Things was exactly your hooker scenario. No clue. Was it? No idea. Never. What never was, heard it? What of was it? it called? Very a Bad movie Things. movie called Very Bad Things? Oh, that's right. With De Niro. I should have known. Was it? Seriously? No. Oh, okay. Uh, Danny? It's with Christian no, it's Slater guy, and Je I don't get yeah, on it's a, no, it's a guy's oh. bachelor party, and he's, uh -huh. he's fucking the hooker. And kills her completely by accident. In it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't oh, like this murderous thing. Oh, okay, I remember thing. that. Yeah, yeah he, okay. He goes to like put her up against the wall. Yeah, but there was a bunch of guys involved. It's a yeah, but only party. one of them yeah. was was fucking her. Like he was the only one that had the balls to go and fuck her. Yeah, but did, did, didn't they all get involved in the disposal of her body? Yeah, because they yeah. panicked. See, this is one guy, and he doesn't know what the fuck to do, and he's married, and right, you know. Come yeah. on, cut us some slack. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I would, you know. You guys are fucking ripping people off. Yeah, we're horrid. Tom in Cleveland. Hey, Hope, can you give our new site a mention on the air? We would love to get more members. Uh, we are the guys that keep attacking the Maxwell Show. We have a new surprise for Fat Boy. They're still going at it. Oh, yeah. Maxwell. I know. I it love doesn't it. stop. Just mm -hmm. keep keep going on them. Not funny. The onavirus.com. <laughs> is that a site that is uh, being cool to us or what? Uh, I don't know. Who knows these days? Well, I read one recon. website, and the, you know the, the news broke. It was a press release that we're doing a pilot for Comedy Central, and like the f first twenty posts were them making fun that of that we fact already suck. That we're doing a show for Comedy Central, it's like, and you, what? you call yourselves a fan site? What? Uh, I, I don't. What? I don't get yeah. it. Well, I don't yeah. get it. Fuckers. But the Maxwell stuff is still going strong, Jimmy. Not funny. Yeah. You'd be proud of the boys. Bad Jewish oh, guy. Not I think they, I think they're posting pamphlets all over Cleveland now. I mean, they're just going all out. This one guy, uh, he's like, I think he's even psychotic on MySpace. He sent me some some cool ones, links. Fucking this kid's organized. I, I <laughs> listen to audio. Eat a bullet mentions. They just fucking won't <laughs> stop bothering this fucking <laughs> asshole cunt guy, in Cleveland. <laughs> and they should keep bothering him. He's a cunt. Hmm. He really is. All Didn't right. you guys like blow up his? You sent so many. Oh yeah, his mind. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, we'll give uh, the onavirus dot com uh, a little plug today. See what they're all about. Just want this, the websites to be about the show and yeah, that that don't it don't even bother. Go to myspace dot com. Jim Norton. It's the best message oh. board. Really? Yeah. F <laughs> it's like, I, what I do is every, all new friends. I send ten dollars in in cash to. <laughs> you do not. <laughs> I do in a crisp, in a crispy ten. 
And, uh, do and, not. And also, I want to acknowledge RadioGoldFans.com because they got their 10th member overnight. So congratulations <laughs> to those guys. They're doing wonderful. <laughs> Time for line of the day. Uh, Nick, I imagine you're going to have a few in here, my friend. I wouldn't, gonna I wouldn't bet on it. I'm fucking exhausted today. I got <clears throat> nothing. Nick's going to have no, a bunch. Definitely had something. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this now. This is my new bit. Nick's gonna have a bunch. Anthony's gonna have line of the day. It's brought really? to you by Bodog Fantasy I'll have Sports one. Oh, no, had Jimmy, a ton. You, you got a, I'll have one. You got the uh, runner up, I believe. Jimmy, oh, it was a doozy. But uh, Ant had one that I'd be very surprised. Really, line of the day. competitions yeah. make me nervous. I know. Oh, I'm too. still like six runner up. Bodog yeah. Fantasy Sports.net. If you're a fantasy baseball player, then make sure to log on to Bodog to get the edge this year. It's free, and they offer public and private leagues and a variety of ways to play. Fastest growing fantasy experience in the country, Bodog Fantasy Sports.net. Play one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she, she married a sanitation worker. Shame. Shame. Shame on you. They find the families with the Down syndrome child. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. Whoa, hey, that, <laughs> a little, that's a nice little surprise. Downs always uh, seems to get into the yeah, line of the day. I know that was easy. Whether it's the Mo haircut, the big tongue. Hey, um. Frank from Manhattan, O and A, you're, you're forgetting his failed attempt to flush the bunny suit down the toilet while the dead hooker stares mockingly from the tub. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a nice visual. The bloody overflow. Of we the forgot. Toilet. Yeah, the dead eyes. The dead eyes are just staring at you. Oh God! Hey, what did I miss? Do you cut the head off first and then put it somewhere so it's just looking at you? And then he gets all upset and turns it around toward the wall. Yeah. Or he puts a face cloth over it. <laughs> You put uh, it in your ice bucket and put it out in the hallway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Leave it for room service. Uh, yeah, just housekeeping. The, just the dead eyes, just with that dead stare. I was just trying to figure out what the fuck to do next. Next year, a couple of Parker rolls. All right, here's another uh, runner-up line of the day. Ooh. They are big and they are yellow, but apparently they are not very green. The free the phone Asian books basketball that you get. Team. A <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and Gurney, she slammed Gurney. the limo door on her own fucking pink sock, <laughs> her ass pink sock and dragged it like a jacket sleeve <laughs> hanging out someone's fucking car door. And she jumped and went, Ow, it pinches. <laughs> <laughs> that pink sleeve. I think these guys decide to do line of the day starting at 10 o'clock. I think so, too. It's yeah. the last few minutes. Yeah. It's very suspicious in how they put this together. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another runner-up line of the day. Really? I mean, Jimmy's. It was, it was quite brilliant, but... His just... pillowcase is like 51 flavors. <laughs> 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 Nick DiPaolo, Caroline's tonight, right here in New York City. You will not be disappointed, my friends. And go to nickdip.com, could you? I don't For know the, why, but just go. It's a brand new site. I spent a ton of money on it. Blog TV, right? Blog TV, too. April 1st at uh, 4 o'clock and April 2nd at 9 p.m. So what, you're just talking to a camera? Yeah. And if you have, uh, a, yeah. If you have a webcam, I click on you, you're my co-host. Fucking blast, actually. That's kind of cool. You know, it is. It's really cool, man. And, uh, you know, what else? It's this. Caroline Snight's a big one, 8 p.m. Come on out, folks. We're going to do Jägermeister shots, and it'll be terrific. I'm selling Dave Chappelle CDs after the show. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know. G-Man from Charlotte, North Carolina, writes, The old man leaves the room, back to the hooker thing, sees a happy family on a family vacation by the pool, <laughs> reminding him of his happy family, <laughs> his family. he'll never see again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't know why, but we love that fucking scenario. It just enough paints, of it. It's such tragedy <laughs> right. and so much trouble. <laughs> like, he's in so much trouble. So you got to get so many details in there so you can really appreciate, and, like, and, the and, character. And just the stress you would feel just attempting to make it all go away. That's the beauty of yeah. it. You know it can't just, <laughs> just disappear. Right. And you're not even worried at that point about going to jail at your fucking wife. Yeah, you're thinking you're about really the wife. About. <laughs> right. She's going to rip your nuts off. You don't care about going to jail the rest of your life. It's right. a cranky bitch. Uh, uh. 
Imagine you do get away with it, but you leave like one dumb thing behind, a stupid like fake fingernail or something. Something would get him, just yeah. Because he's too, he's not <laughs> experienced. He can't clean up fucking evidence. <laughs> the guy's an idiot. He's just trying to get a fucking hooker one night. You sneak out at like, you know, like three in the morning down to the lobby and you try to put her head in the fireplace. They have a <laughs> fake fireplace. <laughs> you got it in an ice bucket. You got the lid on, on the. They <laughs> totally catch him like William H. Macy and Fargo. All right. <laughs> okay. Be right right there yeah yeah okay one minute yeah. and then they bust in he's trying to get out the window no 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 he hears this kid upstairs or something right and he oh just and he's doing that way over oh his fucking father-in-law's dead in the trunk yeah uh yeah that. he doesn't have the money he doesn't have his wife and he's just like yeah okay <laughs> no i think i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> well, the, well, the first thing you do is call your wife try to stay calm and go i i, I have to stay another day in uh, minnesota yeah. Or wherever. Yeah. Columbus. They added, a, just, they uh, added a Sunday night Dayton. show. Right. <laughs> uh, right. And go, all right, now I got 24 more hours to figure this fucking thing out. You're on the rooftop of the hotel like De Niro in Godfather <laughs> 2. You got 19 pieces. You put them down fucking <laughs> down vent pipes. Down pipes, <laughs> toilet pipes. And <laughs> I'm glad Nick is here to help us with our scenario. <laughs> you just spend the first, like... Couple of hours on the side of the bed crying, right. not wanting to touch the dead body right. that's under the sheets. Yeah, the panic. I think huh? I would. Uh, I think I would start like just cutting the hair and flushing the toilet. Just see how much stuff I could flush down the toilet. That would be my first move. Hair. Whatever. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Stan. Just yelling, uh, uh, like blameful things at the corpse. You're just yelling at why? You should have said you couldn't breathe. <laughs> What happened? You've ruined my fucking life! You've ruined my fucking life! Because no one's gonna look for a hooker, so... You bitch! The beauty of this is, no one's That's gonna right. look for the hooker, so all your job is to make this disappear. Here. Every body piece. But it's a, it's one of those motel-type hotels, too. It's like a seedy right. thing. So you can't just carry it out. You're, once you're out, you're in the parking lot. Yeah, but the pimp doesn't want to be involved. He's like, fuck, I, I just lost no, so one. So what do you do with the body think. parts? What was this guy? I told you, you flush gonna do? as much as you can down the uh, You'd the have toilet. to cut it up into chunks like Dinty no, Moore stew. but you start that way. But as soon as you like decide to cut a finger off and flush that, now it's, now the blood, the bleeding starts. <laughs> or, or you know what else is good? You have a lot of blood, and then you try something too big, and it gets stuck and backs up the toilet, and bloody water kind of <laughs> overflows. This is so now you need to find a mop. Now you don't have a plunger. And you know part of her hand is jammed in the toilet. Hi, right, this is Mr. DiPaolo in 301. Uh, is this the front desk? Yeah, do you guys have a Cuisinart? Or a food processor? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. Need and a uh, couple blenders. <laughs> These fucking guys get it, too. Flying standby from Virginia. The guy's first reaction is to put the do not disturb tag on the outside of the door, thinking that will buy him some more time. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> And leaves, like, bloody fingerprints on there because he thinks of it later. You try to get body parts past the front desk. You have to try to get the body parts outside. Without sweating your balls off, like, uh, oh, just going outside, just going for some lunch. Yeah, you wait till late at night, and you put a throw over your shoulder, and you bring her out, prop her up in a launch <laughs> next to the pool, and get the fuck out of there. <laughs> He thinks of that after he's already all cut up. Like he's, now he's like, sew her back together. Yeah, he's got this great idea, but she's all fucking cut up now. Now he's trying to put her back together. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Fucking A, man. Another, I love this guy. Another runner off line of the day. Oh, like, see, a lot of muscle, muscle to hold that uh, head up there that high, I guess. Not a big head, though. No, a little yeah. peanut stupid head. head with those dumb little antennas. Yeah. What the hell are those horns on their head are all yeah, about? Know, so their hats don't fall off. <laughs> I was they should put them in the way so that their fedoras don't slip off because <laughs> <laughs> their hooves can't pick them up. <laughs> the idea. That's a great <laughs> visual. <laughs> Fucking giraffe in a fedora that with his like, little. Horns holding it on is that, that might be a great visual. That might be a co logic animation fantastic. right there. Just hey, look, details look at... on our uh, animation festival coming very soon. We're almost ready to, to give you all the details. Uh, Jimmy, I interrupted. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, I was saying, just looking at his fedora and looking at his hooves and going, ah, fuck. Like, <laughs> it's, once it happens, it's, un, uh, it's unfixable. It fell off. Another giraffe walks by with his fedora and kind of chuckles at him. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when you try to pick up some grass. <laughs> Fucking fedora on a giraffe. Fedora. <laughs> and not even just a regular old hat. No kidding. Uh, what else? That what is? do we got? Line One of the day? runner-up line of the day.
I straddled Nancy Reagan's chest and titty fucked her until they both <laughs> fell off. <laughs> Ronald Reagan put his colon on my mouth and I ate it out. Uh, you yeah. know. <laughs> I scalp fucked John F. Kennedy in Dallas in the early 60s. Just a, a fag zelligate. <laughs> 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 God, we should have played What Did We Learn on the Opie and Anthony show today. This is all in the last hour. Very, very uh, informational. Well, and then people will go on a message board and, and say that we call it in over here. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's oh, right. shit. Obviously. It. Obviously, we it's did. like McNeil Lair over here. Extremely <laughs> obvious. Uh, Nick, thank you so much. Guys, you're the best. You're, you're very generous thank having you, me in here so much, and I appreciate Nick's it. Great addition to the program. Absolutely. Really is. Come to Caroline's, folks, if you live in the tri-state area. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tonight, 8 p.m. Uh, this would be a little awkward, but... Um, trying to find someone to fill in for Jimmy, but I'm not sure if we have the dude. See, <laughs> see Nick, mm, Nick would have yeah. been perfect. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing tomorrow, Nick? Want to uh, be on standby? Tomorrow's uh, Friday? Tomorrow? Steve, What's today? Steve, yeah, I'm around. Who's filling in for uh, Jimmy? I'm around, if you, if you need right now, me. Rich. Rich is definitely. Mm -hmm. I right, tell Rich to stay home. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we have pal talk cameras, Nick. Uh, I'm kidding. This is what, this I fucking love. You You're talking about Rich Franchese, right? <laughs> this is what I yeah. let you know. Uh, I'm boss. I like boss. He's funny. Oh, Voss is going to be so disappointed. Watch. He's clicked down. Well, he's been on notch. here enough. Come on, I'm playing catch up here. I say we have a little uh, another day with Nick tomorrow. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't want to cause any hurt feelings. How about we do this? We make Voss get up nice and early. Nick, you sleep in. When you roll out of bed, you come in. Oh, tag team. Why not? It's, <laughs> it's Friday. As long as he's cleared the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll figure that out. We got to do line of the day. BodogFantasySports.net. Check that out. Line of the day. Here, Here comes. Where did it all go wrong for you, Nick? I don't. I, I don't know that it has all. What sense? Uh, Brown what? versus Board of Education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norton Whoa. said that. I want to kiss more guys. Oh, Sam, enough about the guys. Sam, holy Glad shit, here. Jimmy, I apologize. I thought that was going to be runner-up line of the day, and I thought Ant was going to get it with the Oscar De La Hoya thing. What was your De La Hoya line? That fucking, uh... Um, oh, with the, uh, the, the gloves. gloves. When he was talking about wearing <laughs> the heavyweight gloves, and oh, I go, uh, Oscar De La Hoya was wearing a little black number up to the elbow. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, that's okay. I don't know. I think some of those... Ah, that's all right. Oh, iffy. Jimmy. Yeah, no. Jimmy oh, those, I don't know. I think some of those were a bit... And we made it to 11! <laughs> I got right. go, Yeah! <laughs> Let's go, go to Gurney and get a beer. We got to get out of here. I Jimmy is hitting catch. the road. Uh, Seattle, the Moore Theater on there uh, Friday night. And then, uh, Don't bring that up now. Portland, uh, I'm not sure where. Seattle? Yes, yeah, Seattle. You're going to Seattle? I am, and I'm uh, then taking a train to Portland, and I will be... I forget the name of the theater in New Portland. Newmark Theater. Oh, the, the New, oh. Newmark Theater in Portland, Oregon. Hey, I, I, uh, I know everything. I did an Opie word today, too. Informational. Informational? Yeah. All right. Understood. Mark All right. that down. Daddy has Process. to tinkle. I'll see you guys. Uh, All right. See you Monday. Break a leg there, big Take boy. Me, Jimmy. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs> bye, Kenny. Are you driving me? Yeah. Take it easy, Kenny. I have a nice see? weekend. You too, Kenny. <laughs> Look at him. He's just giant and stupid. <laughs> Monster. <laughs> he really is. With very dry hair. <laughs> Realize how big those other guys were, though. Yeah. Right? Oh, my God. Giants. Fuck. You think they're his guys, or you think they're the WWE guys? Oh, that's a good question, too. I think I, they're... Those are his. Yeah. Though, I, How do you know? Are, you could just tell. How do you know, Steve? You could tell Because I was eyes. talking to the guy from the WWE who told me that he's got a nine-guy nine on. But through. he would tell you. He would say that to keep the gimmick I, going. I don't think You so. don't this think was, they're professional well, wrestlers? True, or guys that want to be wrestlers, they're giant guys. I think boxy. I that think, they hired. And, I think he can afford to have an entourage of eight guys following him around. But but they're going to be in the ring doing all these things. Wouldn't it be more convenient if he had that entourage? I, I, I don't. Steve, you. Whatever Steve says, it's real. It's fake. Whatever he says, it's fake. It's real. True is false. False is true. 
Intruders. You're like one of those fucking things that screw up uh, every <laughs> machine on Star Trek. <laughs> 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 If it's logical, then it is illogical to think it's logical, and then it smokes, and Kirk fucks a green woman. <laughs> Turn off the I'm lights, and you guys are done. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm right. I actually, I have to get out of here. I have a uh, very important business. Uh, thanks, Nick. At the homestead. Fellas, thank you so much. We don't do professional radio endings anymore. We're just no, we just kind of let it that fucking peter out. Yeah, just put your coat on and leave. Yeah, that's, that's the fucking yeah. hip way to do it. It's like showing up late for a party. It's very... I didn't know what the fuck that meant. All right, I uh, get out of here before I hurt my career. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding a piss since like four o'clock this month. Uh, push that button. I want to kiss more guys. <laughs> Hopi and Anthony are the latest shock jobs to hit it big. Goddamn! They are heavily into one thing. Boobies. <laughs> Boobies. Yes. One of you, I don't know which one, said, then you can pull out your business. It's junk. We're artists. You present it as innocent, but I'm not so sure it is. Screw you. We're artists. Is there anything you won't do for ratings? We are publicity whore bags. Publicity sluts. We're artists. This is all about money. That's what it comes down to. Because you're mercenaries. I mean, you really, you're, aren't you mercenaries? We're radio mercenaries, dickhead. We're artists. We're entertainers. We're not psychologists. We're not doctors. We're not daycare workers. We're artists, though. It's all on the parents, none on you. None on us. We're artists. None on us. Scary.